Down left. Jeff Ferriel. Uh, Ned Neal. Anthony Harkey, Chair. Mr. Jones. Uh, and for all those in attendance, uh, please follow all the COVID guidelines uh, per the city of Columbus. And for public forum, any persons wishing to address the commission on matters not on the post agenda are invited to do so. However, the commission is not able to undertake extended discussion or act on non agenda items. The communication should be kept to a three minute limit. Any items for the forum? We do not. Go ahead for the forum. Moving on to the approval of staff approvals. Staff approvals for the commission begins on page. It's 13 of your time. Second to those. Excuses. Is there a motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to ratify the staff approvals. Second. Question of a motion. Those in favor? Aye. Uh, right. Against? Let's have the motion passes. Move on to the approval of minutes from the last meeting, November 3rd, 2021. Motion to. Mr. Chair, I move to approve the minutes from the uh, last meeting. Second. Question of a motion. Favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Seven. Motion passes. Move on to the application for certificate appropriateness. I 1 GB 21 12 019 698 700 City Park Avenue. Yes. Raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Yep. Please state your name for the record. Chris Hawk with the last name. Okay. Application number GV 2112019, proposed work description is removal of slate on the south elevation, slate on other elevations to remain. The slate is 12 inches wide and 24 inches long. Clear Pennsylvania black slate. The slate has been described as beyond its serviceable life, as stated in the submitted slate assessment. Install 716 CSB OSB <laughs> over space board with new 13 three tab nickel gray from the approved shingles list. Applicant to install red metal bridge roll to match existing. Staff analysis, the slope being replaced is close to the adjacent property and does not seem visible from the street view. The applicant will be maintaining the other three slopes with original slate. Slate assessment has been provided stating that the main south slope of the roof or the roof gets the most sun exposure, the steel nails are failing and the slate itself is flaking away and can be described as being on a serviceable life. Staff recommends approval of any and all clarifications to be submitted to HBO staff for review and approval prior to issuance of the certificate with conditions that the applicant consider using the approved slate line or carriage house to better match existing slate. Based off of the, the work is consistent with CC 311611 standards of alteration number six, interim and village guidelines, roof gutters, down about page 52, number nine, and that's all. Anything else to add? Nope. Questions come to the commission. I would make one question. Um, has you talked to the, the owner about when you're taking out the old slate? Anything that still has some life and serviceability to store that away? I yeah. haven't, but I, I will say if there's any good left that are left on that side, we can say use three pair on other sides on a other basis. That help potentially maintain yeah, the water. Absolutely. absolutely. Mr. Chair, and item GB 21-12-019-698, City Park Drive, I move to approve this submitter. Second. Second was Mr. Burial. Is it as submitted or with the recommendation from staff? Did not hear anything that they were going to do that. Okay. So the shingles is fine to submit it. But it's verified. Thank you. Any other questions on the motion? The vote all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Let's have a motion to pass it. Thank you very much. The record show Commissioner Floyd is now here. 
move on to item 2GB-21-10-030253 Lansing Street. Please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Please say your name for the record. Sarah Hunt. Sarah Young McCoy. Thank you very much. Application BB 2110 30 uh, 25, <laughs> 253 Lansing Street. Proposed work description to construct a new two story coach house structure 20 feet to the rear of the existing residence. Proposed carriage house will be 600 square feet and offset from the existing rear alley in line with the face of the adjacent structure. First floor will comprise of a two car garage and storage space. Second floor will comprise a bed and sitting room carpet. Steered finish will be board and batten siding for the second floor and one by six scallop shiplap siding on the first floor. Roofing shingles will be owned supporting standard free tab in a state gray. Windows will be pillow and pervia fiberglass composite with exterior and interior. Painted aluminum attic vents, painted fiberglass garage doors, two by 10 feet or with six by six column stain. For staff analysis, the following is taken from the unapproved November 3rd, 2021 hearing. Commissioners asked the height of the primary in conjunction with the proposed carriage house, applicant responded stating the primary structure is two feet taller. Applicant states that the proposed garage addresses the neighborhood better than the two story contemporary carriage house in the alley. Commissioner Steele responded stating that he was against the contemporary design when first submitted. Commissioner stated that there would be a bulk store sizing building and carriage house with cottage homes. Commissioner Farrell stated that he does not wish to repeat the mistakes that have been made in the past. One is enough, enough for a carriage house in addition. Commissioner McCoy stated she was not opposed with the massing of the other building along the streetscape. Commissioner Durst understands the problem with losing security of the small cottages in the neighborhood, but seems to have already been lost along the alley. Commissioner states that the design fits with what's existing. Commissioner Harkey inquired about the alleyscape and sizing to verify that there would be enough turning radius. Commissioner requested site plan to know the dimensions of the alley and to make sure there's 20 feet to allow for turning radius. Also for the applicant to include the existing pergola on the site plan. Commissioners requested clarification of the layout design of the second floor bedroom sitting area that typically commission does not allow a combination of a kitchen and bathroom. Staff recommends that commission offers feedback on the design and recommends to continue the application. Based off of CC 3116-12 standards of new construction, letter D, E, and M, and German Village Guidelines, New Buildings, Garages and Outbuildings, page 113, number 1, 2, 4, 5, and 13. Anything else to add? Uh, actually, we wanted to reduce the size of the What plumbing fixtures are proposed for the second floor? The toilet, shower, and the extension. No kitchen attic. No kitchen. I'll just repeat what I've said before. It's inappropriate for this property. Addition of a carriage house in 21 22 is fictional historicism and not appropriate. It agrees the historic character of the alley and the property hence the overall historic district. And I agree with uh, Commissioner Teal. This is uh, adding to the proliferation of inappropriate carriage houses associated with smaller houses that didn't historically have such larger outbuildings. I have a question about the, the garage door placements. Um, I do appreciate the double. Two separate garages doors, um, having them offset to the one side and the window to the right. That's not the typical uh, facade orientation you can see in the village. Typically, you get the, the garage doors centered on the garage. Is there a reasoning behind having the garage doors offset? I only think there's some storage space on the right hand side of the garage.
Uh, I stand by the comments I had um, when we reviewed this before, and I understand that we're losing the small garages, but yet I feel like this streetscape is pretty much already gone, and there are buildings of that stature along there. So I don't have an issue with it. I'm fine with the two because it's a better option than adding on to the small picture. I'm of the opinion of I agree with Commissioner McCoy. I'm just not sold on the garage work being off centered. I think it's adding to the non garage nature of the carriage house. So I'm not opposed to the carriage house. Of this mass, this location. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 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 I think I had to see a nine versus the ten foot wide. I just don't know what it's going to look like when they move and centered what the distance between them are. Sketch. Yeah, I'll take a sketch of that sketch. <laughs> I, I, I think it's going to look much the same as it does right now because we don't have that much frontage. What you're going to see is the same side panel instead of the left hand side by taking up the extra two feet. We'll probably Increase the width of the uh, center pilaster by about probably another foot, and then it will balance itself out across the point of the elevation. I just have to make what I don't want to see is wouldn't want to see skinny on one side, skinny on the other. Well, We're going to make send a, a revised elevation to you prior to the issuance of a COA. But that conversation there is that enough for you to review that? Um, honestly, I'm not sure. Um, I mean, I, I can do, but are you saying the staff is writing? If, if this goes three to two vote, I would have to make sure that we get a revised elevation. I'm not sure there's enough information for you to. So. Yeah. He'll make that action. Yeah, I, yeah, I believe so. I, I can, you know, consult with James and but um, it should be um, if that's our approval. Gotcha. And I, I guess to begin the second floor plan as well. So that's only that. Yes, I did not receive that. Um, that's yeah. I'm sorry. I thought I did but I can quote it. Yeah, you can be my law. Yeah, we had a week also as well, so I guess yeah. that's so. <laughs> yeah. Just just to make sure we're got our ducks in a row. Mm -hmm. um, submit the second floor plan to the staff, revised elevation, the staff. Um, I think that's all we need to take the vote. Is there a motion? I move on application GB-21-10-030 253 Lansing Street to approve the application as amended to make center the garage door so the elevation is symmetrical and to uh, the second floor only has a bathroom and to provide the revised drawings to staff. Second. Second. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Aye. Aye. I say the motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. On to item 3, GB-21-10-032, 703 South Pitt Street. Applicant for 703 South Pitt Street. Oh, they are unable to attend this evening. Okay. They did tell me this morning. Um, they will uh, be removed because of their second absence. Um, 
but they said they will be here for the January. Okay. You want to take action to continue this? Now it gets removed, or what's the? I'm going to go for two and removing and go under a different application number. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chair, and item number three, GB 21 10 032. I move to continue. Second. Question of the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Seven. All right, on to item four, GB 21 11 027 566 South 4th Street. And for 566 South 4th Street. Uh, moving on to item 5, GB-21-11-026-707 South 6th Street. Please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Please state your name for the record. Uh, Sean Schley. GB-21-11-026-707 South 6th Street. Proposed work description, application in response to a code violation. Original slate roof was removed prior to COA or permit. Roof was replaced with asphalt shingles from the approved shingles list. Owen supporting standard three tab of state gray. Staff analysis the applicant recently purchased this property in August 2021. Based off the photos submitted by the applicant, the roof is in poor condition and has been neglected, causing damage to the interior of the home. However, all exterior work is subject to review prior to undertaking and a building permit is required. The past December business meeting, the commission requested staff to see if any maintenance had been done to the original slate roof in the past five, 10 years. As well as inquire how the work has been is being done to the rear exterior of the property. Staff has reviewed all documents in the file for 707 South 6th Street and found no indication for um, made for its maintenance. Staff recommends approval of any other clarifications to be submitted to HPO staff for review and approval prior to issuance of a certificate with conditions that all ridges to be capped with galvanized metal ridge rule in lieu of cut shingle, step, cut shingle tabs and painted tinners red or gray including that the application obtained a building permit, as well as COA applications for the other work being done with the property. This is based off of CC 3116-18, approval required, letter C, and CC 3116-11, standards of alteration number six. Anything else to add? This is a specific form of my units that is definitely partially and partly most of the time start with BC so forth. Told to be basically as long as we're going to change in appearance and we, we use the approved materials, we can you know fix the roof. And I said okay to that. I mean, that was obviously my mistake. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so that was the whole reason. That, now, the other stuff with the rest of the house, uh, my contractor is not on board anymore in the last two and a half, three weeks. So I'm trying to organize all the paperwork, see what he did, what he, what he, uh, what kind of applications he sent in. And, if he I've got any permits or pulled any permits, I'm not really sure. So I'm crossing doing that and hiring a different contractor to continue. Okay. Questions, comments, the commission. So is the work that's been done on the rest of the structure identical to what was there before the work was uh, done? There's I think small changes in the back of the house. The addition that was at some point, uh, the door was going to the opposite side. Other than that, I think everything's about the same. So the siding's the same, same way? I, I think so. Might go look at it. Uh, I it looks like it's about five inch wood siding as opposed to three inch aluminum siding. Okay. Looks like new doors and windows. Any other questions, comments? I have one. It's unfortunate, but here we are. So the questions or comments, is there a motion on the application that is presented? Yeah, an item uh item uh GB twenty one eleven zero twenty six seven oh seven south six street I move to approve as submitted. Is there a second? Second. 
Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? I stand for the motion passes. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item 6 GV 21 09 034 783 South 6th Street. Raise your right hand, please. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. Please state your name for the record. Kathy Hilton. Eric Maxwell. Thank you very much. Item number GV 2109034, proposed work description, proposed expansion of existing enclosed porch. New porch will have the same character and detailing as the existing. Steer finished materials to obtain cedar and lap siding to match the existing home. No zoning variance is clear prior to this project. At the September business meeting, the commission noted that removing the walls and roofing sounds more like demolition versus conversion. The commission requested the drawings more clearly denote what parts of the porch are being removed and demolished. Mission noted that they will need to determine if the porch is contributing. Note that it does not appear to be highly altered. Staff notes that the rear porch can be seen on the structure in the same board map from 1921 to December 1951, but was either enclosed around 1973 or before when COA number 3473 was issued to install limited siding. This can be seen in images in April 1985. Porch was then approved for alterations in 1993 to have four-inch wood siding. The following is taken from the October 6, 2021 German Village Commission hearing minutes. Commissioner Saxton stated that the porch and its administration have been there since the 1970s, that the porch mapping and layout have stayed the same. Commissioner Saxton, the existing enclosed porch is contributing. Commissioner recommended to add an addition to the existing enclosed porch. Commissioner's comment that the stucco skirting has changed and is not stored. If change or maintenance is needed, commissioners would be okay with modifying. Staff recommends. Staff recommendation staff notes the porch has been altered over time. Staff recommends adding in addition to the porch instead of expanding the existing porch based off of CC 31 16 11 standards of alteration number 10 and German village guidelines entryways and porch enclosures page 100 number 10. Mr. Chairman, before we continue, I'm, I have to recuse myself due to proximity from this one. Thank you. Anything else to add? Uh, no, I think Morgan covered it all. We, uh, Look at the commission's uh, recommendations to maintain the massing of the existing structure and are pro proposing a secondary structure uh, to the south uh, of the past uh, screen board structure. Questions, comments from the commission? Well, nice job making an addition of it. My only concern is you've changed the fenestration on the east and west elevations of the existing porch. Correct. Just height. Um, uh, not with, and so we're not changing any of the structure yep. of the foliage. But you've, you've tr yeah, but you've changed it significantly. I mean, the upper, smaller upper windows, it's characteristic of what was there. You've modified it. I, I think it should go back to what it was. I think the, the addition, I think, is going to give you more than enough open area, et cetera, for the view to the to her beautiful yard is to the east. Um, the quarter windows um, are not usable in any fashion uh, as it currently stands. I, would, I mean, it's, it's really a storage uh, structure right now more than a porch. I mean, the, the window head heights are about five feet four. Um, and, and so you can't see out when you're standing or sitting um, to her yard. I think she would really like to expand the height of those windows uh, in some fashion, those screens, uh, to, to give her a full breadth of the, of the Possible. Let me ask you this. Is there some way with the existing with the windows that you're proposing uh, showing where dividing those in a way that we can see what the original window configuration was and that add above and below it? Sure. I mean, I, I would go for that. Okay, just so we can see the characteristics of what was there. Absolutely. Uh, and the other commissioners let them come in on that too. I don't know where they're okay. I mean, we prefer to have it completely. Yeah, I'm just saying we understand. Let us know where it was before. Right. And I would say on, on the addition piece, the new piece, don't have to do that with the, the windows. They can be, they can look separate. Okay. Yeah, they Just should. The existing. They should look separate. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It needs to be a simple kind of piece. It could still be larger opening as long as three visible ones there. I think that's a good, good compromise there. Yep. 
that I will let go. Commission deal statement that says it's a great, great uh, revision. Like this. Make just it just so we can see where we're okay. originally and, and you can expand it. Perfect. Thank you. Still get the full description. Perfect. Happy to do that. Questions or comments? Mr. Chair, on item GB 2109-034783 South 6th Street, I move to approve as the applicant would like to amend their uh, application so that the existing windows are enlarged, but they still show the configuration of what the original opening was. Second. Question on the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. I just have the motion passed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Thank you very much. So, one minute to give Commissioner Farrell back. The next agenda item is going to be agenda item number 7, GB 21 12 020 911 City Park Avenue. Table, you both please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Your name is Sir Greg Stavlin. Thank you. Thank you very much. Rick. TV 2112 here 20, 911 City Park Avenue. Proposed board construction is to replace non original double hung windows with color reserve, four pane, double hung wood interior, and aluminum flat exterior windows, which are from the approved windows list. Proposed new window color to be sand noon for submitted specifications. To replace fixed windows on the east elevation with color reserve. Sash that fixed wood interior to aluminum flat exterior windows, as well as to replace exterior trim and sub sill to match existing. Profile using coral flat stock. Color trim to be SW7076 cyberspace. Applicant proposes to remove, repair, and reinstall our glass transoms on east and north elevation. Replace exterior trim and substill to match existing profiles. Oh, that twice, apparently. Sorry. Um, applicant also proposes to replace exterior doors on east and north elevation with color reserve, four pane, and swing wood door to be painted black. Staff analysis the non original double hung windows were replaced and installed around 1968, but no COA has been found in the file for a window replacement. Under further analysis, the gable windows on the east elevation are original to the structure as verified by the applicant and should remain. The door was originally proposed as an aluminum clad door. After further discussion with the staff recommending to change the exterior door finish to wood, applicant agreed and complied. The current door design does not comply with the German Village guidelines. At the past December business meeting, the commission asked staff to inquire on the dates for the photos that provided as well as the existing staff and built that is not present in older photos. Staff has reached out to GBS, and there are only two photos with dates on them from 1968 and 1980, nothing earlier. Staff recommends um, approval of any and all clarification to be submitted to HBO staff for review and approval prior to issuance of a certificate with conditions on the condition that the original east elevation gable windows are retained and restored, including the front exterior door to comply with door design from the German Village guidelines. Based off of 31 16 11 standard of alteration number two and number six and German Village guidelines entrances, entrances and doors, page 60 and 61. Anything else to add? Questions, comments, the commission. Yeah, I guess, how do you feel about keeping the windows up in the gable and having a door that complies with the guidelines? Uh, the gable windows are original. Everyone is there. From the habit of staying the leak and if you have a constant condensation down in the back of your bowl or some bowl in the bedroom, not sure what it was. And just the draftiness. So the back house, back of the house, those cables are visible. This place we were talking about the ones at the front. It's actually on the west side. What's on the east side? <laughs> the windows that that. The existing windows that you said should be kept are on the east elevation. Yeah, they're on the east It's west. It's west side. Yeah. That is my apologies. <laughs> so I thought the space east. Uh, but the gable windows are at the rear 
Okay. okay so, the, so the ones the ones in the east gable you're keeping. I don't want to keep any of those. Yeah. So it would be the west elevation. So that's waterfall in the opposite direction. Um, but on the gable end on the rear of the property. Correct. Correct. Yes. Page three of the application. Bottom right, those top two windows. That's what we're noticing. Yes, we can. So gable windows. And what about the door? We were just trying to match the door other than the glazing. Front bars. That's the only they wanted to add was the front bars. It's thicker portions of glass, sand panel. This one add much more. My issue is the mud bars. So that we would not find that in a in a door. Okay. Even way back. Okay. It would have gone for the expense of a large piece of glass for the door. Right. And certainly not a four. I'm, I'm all for getting rid of the muttons and single piece of glass, but not that. Yeah. 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 How about the same thing, the door? Be clear that your your concerns were just two windows in the room. The buttons divided by the Yeah. Factor. I'm not so concerned about the windows on the west side. Yeah. Yeah, the commissioners haven't thought on the on the door specifically. I agree. Right. Yeah, if you want the door with the glass and then single plain glass, three four. Any thoughts on the windows? The two windows up there. Try just getting them paired. It's more than just repair. The homeowner's thoughts behind that is if we put a storm window, that's the only true, I guess, mandate for it. And it's going to take away from the look from the outside by putting a storm window over it versus having a new window and have a five button bar. As you would see, it's a secluded area on the back of the house. They want to maintain those window sashes for a piece of furniture just to keep the history with the house. So it's not that they want to take those out and trash them, they just they want to maintain them, but they want the house to be efficient and not have water running down the back of the wall. Kind of a piece too, right? Yes, sir. I'm partial to front door and be a single pane to allow the, the back two windows to go, being that they're up high, not visible the right way, not primary features of the physical design. And I'm torn. They seem like they're the only remaining original windows in the structure. Front facade's not original. No. No. Not at all. Jeff, I kind of question whether these are actually the original frame. I mean, the sashes may be old. Yeah, you're right. I'm right. wondering if the frames are are fairly new and they used on the flashes. To be honest with you, could be. We have the same plot because of the curve. Yeah, I know that's what I'm thinking too. We can go with that. Right. Yeah. And looking at the beginning, just just the depth they're set back just feels odd. It's not for yeah. not being a double one. Yeah, Something just doesn't shake out. Well, they probably work, but in casements. But I'm still set back to the Let's see. So with that conversation, would you be amenable to having a single glass, single pane front door uh, to amend the application for that if, if we agree to remove the rear windows? For the front door or all three doors? 
for all three would be my position. The two side doors are identical. Number eight component. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, at least three because that's the majority. We're okay with the single light, but we have the, the votes for yeah. divided. Yeah. Like, do you your application to that or? Uh, it's my clients on them. It's their home. Um, yep. I would say more than likely they'll agree to that. If we if we amend our application and they want to see a different door, can we come back as a change? Yeah. If you so if you amend it now, and it sounds like you have the votes needed to approve that, it gives you something to move forward with. Okay. If you want to come back and apply for a different door, you're more than welcome to do that. At least you have something in your hand if you can got say it. we've got the green light on this. Got it. Yes. I agree with that. Okay. Thank you. Questions? Anything? Yeah. Not a motion. Item GV 2112 020 9 Park Avenue. I move to uh, approve as amended by the applicant and that the doors will be a single undivided light. Second. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Seven. Thank you much. Move on to item number eight, GV 21 12 021, 804 South Pearl Street. Please raise your right hand. Be swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I did. Please state your name for the record. John Gwen. Q U I N X. Right. Our brother Marcus Kirkland to install install storage shed in southeast corner of property, which has already been built prior to approval. The existing shed is four inches wide by eight feet long. Or sorry, four feet wide by eight feet long by nine and a half feet tall. Storage shed will be painted the same color as fence, color to be Ralph Bar 4005 TV, high sheet seal. Staff notes and staff notes that the storage shed is rather large in comparison to the fence that runs behind it, but that is not visible from a right away, only the neighbor's backyard property. Commission requested to provide the height of the garage structure that sits behind the shed to pass the December business meeting. Commissioners also requested a drawing of the final design plan of the shed as well as the Already poured concrete slab needed a permit. Applicant has been bought and stated the adjacent garage is around 10 feet tall and um, was told to believe that he did not need a permit for the concrete slab. Staff recommends approval with any all clarifications be sent into HPO staff for review and approval prior to the issuance of a certificate with conditions that the shed height be lowered to blend in better with the existing fence. This is based off of German Village Guidelines, New Buildings, Garages and Outbuildings, page 132, number 16. Anything else ahead? I did provide a, a drawing electronically if anybody wanted to see it. Uh, if there's a miscommunication, I missed the sure. Sure. Take a look at it. And also, the nine and a half feet tall, that's at the uh, the peak of the, of the sloped roof. The walls are. There's a miscommunication. We're going to we'll go off the photos that we had, and the photos are all. Doesn't really show any peak. It looks like just a flat. Yeah. Well, so this is. It's far from completed, obviously. I stopped building, I'm building myself. I stopped building and I was issued to code violation. That, that part is not an issue. What's the height of what's in this photo right now, just for reference purposes? So the, so it's the eight feet for the, so eight feet plus three inches. Okay. Whatever that's, okay. But it's not played in, in the basement. So it's nine and a half feet at the front door and slopes down to eight feet. No, that's actually so it's it's eight feet plus I can't do math <laughs> really quickly. So it's eight feet plus the inch and a half to the top, inch and a half to the bottom plate. So looking at it from the side, the slope of the roof is going to be going across longitudinally, and that's where the that's where the extra foot and a half will be to make it nine feet. So it's nine and a half feet to the right side of the door and it slopes down to the left. I'll show you this picture though. It's probably okay. it's, I'm sorry. And then my printer was on the fritz too, so but so this is Looking directly at it. So this is eight feet to here. And the extra foot and a half is just looking at the slope of the rest of the This is it from the side. There you go. Oh. Yeah. 
Yeah. Doesn't have the, the, the cable. Roof that's roof off. Yeah, I was told by the city to stop operation of this. Oh, this was a CH. So this was what it looked like from either side of the identity. And then you're looking at it. And hey, it looks like an outhouse. Well, that's from the side. I mean, I'm not saying that's wrong. Yeah. And so, like, you're looking directly at the front door to look like this, and then the back will be the exactly the same. Just sort of. And the color as as I mentioned will be the exact same as that back step. Here's the approved. And also, I, I didn't. The more miscommunication on my part, but I totally apologize for all of this. But like, those are two garages on the other side. So my guess was the walls were ten feet tall. The top of those roofs, those buildings, are, I'm sure, well above ten. So besides the shed, which you can sort of see, which would be directly to the east, um, it, it will it won't it will be much shorter than the other two structures. I'm sorry. The roof material. So I was going to use asphalt stingles. I, I apologize. I embarked on this whole project without seeking the prior approval because my wife and I just purchased this property about a, about a, a year ago, and I just totally naive in this process, which is my fault. So I mean, frankly, they could be whatever is needed. I mean, I've not, not purchased any of those yet. The question of the business meeting about meeting a foundation was typically if the structure is over a certain height, the city of Columbus requires a foundation to require permit. There was some conversation of being a shed if it does or does not. And that's what we're hoping to find out from somebody from zoning to, to make a determination on that. What we hate to do is approve something, have you proceed forward, and all of a sudden you get reported to zoning and they come back and say, well, this didn't get a permit, there's not a foundation, and then you get a tear down start from scratch. Right. That's the worst case scenario. Yeah. But then architecturally and, and appropriateness wise, does it fit into the context of what's there what we're going to be looking at here at the commission? So that's we're hoping to find out yeah. that question at the business meeting about that. So to answer your question about that, as my understanding was in the department a gentleman from the Department of Building Safety came out and sold it down. He said as long as it's under 200 square feet, it does not require a permit. Okay. So and this is 32 square feet, so it, it fells well under that. Question of the commission is proposed height location. Acceptable or is there something? I think there's for an outbuilding in the back, 32, four, four by eight with a center ridge slope group. Yeah, it's kind of typically what you kind of might expect about it. This all being built because my yard is big enough where I need to maintain it. Same with the garden. Right now, I keep my lot lower and my basement that I have to bring from my kitchen. It's kind of one of this. I mean, is there a build one or was going to buy one that looks cheap if it was metal or plastic? So I figured this was kind of the best way before I began this whole thing. Better, better solution. Yeah. So, plus it cost me about the same. Thing, but, uh, What's the fence height? Just out of curiosity. I believe it's five feet. I think that's, that's really to me was that's right. throwing it all off. Yep. the scale. That's eight feet. Yeah. yeah. I think it is. Look at the door next door. That door to the right is probably a seven foot door. Yes. Yeah. So it's going to be down. So. All right. Questions or comments, or is there a motion? <coughs> On application G. Well, that's the original of Wall Street. Through the application as. With the clarification that the shed will have a gable roof going parallel with the long elevation and asphalt shingles. And that the uh, 9 foot 5 height and then the pitch peak of the roof. 8 foot 3 thereabouts at the spring line. But clarification that the drawing he showed us is bounded in the application in the organs of where what it is. Okay. So staff does have the drawing. Your yeah. second. Second. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? I say that motion passes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.
Item 9, GV-21-12-022543 Mohawk Street. If you both please raise your right hand. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Sir, please state your name. Sheila Cruz. Thank you, Kevin Cruz. Thank you very much. Proposed work description is to install five copper down lights, replace and stop it as seen in submitted photos. Copper down lights will be a pivot head fixture and an angle down towards the driveway. Also proposed is to install string bistro lights across side patio. Proposed wire for lighting is 14 2 direct ferry wire in a 3 8 inch diameter copper sleeve. It will run vertically along the edge of where the brick and wood come together on the side of the house. This wiring for the down lighting and including string lights to Sorry, this wire for the dial loading and the string lights to be mounted in the transformer next to the exterior outlet. Staff analysis staff had initially reached out to applicant to explain that staff would not recommend down lighting since it is not typically recommended in German village. Staff did recommend landscape lighting at ground level that would exclude spotlighting as an alternative to the down lighting. The past December business meeting, commission requested that the applicant provide a cut sheet of the pivot light specifically to have a better understanding of the look and how they will be installed, which the applicant has submitted. Staff does not recommend use, the use and install of down lighting, but would recommend the proposed feature lights as well as any landscaping lighting at ground level. This is based off staff recommendations. Permit Village Guidelines site, light, site Lighting, Street Furniture, Pool, Balance and Gazebos, page 122, number three. Anything else to add? Uh, no. Okay. Watch. Well, actually, only yes. one light pivots. There's four lights that go underneath the soffit, which you can't see with any of the lights. There's four. The fifth one is the one that goes to the alley, and it's very dark back there. That one is actually going to pivot, and it would be pivoted down towards the driveway. Questions, comments, and questions? That's the one with the pivot. Is the picture of the stuff in the, in the revised application? Um, it should be the pivot light is there. Um, I removed the other restriction that you submitted, thinking that the pivot light was the one that you were using for all five of them. So I apologize about that. But the pivot light is there. And that's actually in the Midwest um, form as well. So then you do have my lights up there, or you don't? I do. Yes, the pivot light is there. Page 12. That's the pivot one. There. Okay. And which one is this? That's the down light. If we look at page two, Zoom out a little bit. There you go. So, looking down this facade, you're saying that the this one here, the pivot one, is going to be the back far right of that picture. Yeah, right? at the at the end, where the alley is. Yeah. So, how are the fixed lights mounted? Are they mounted to the brick then? Or no, they're, they are mounted to the wood soffit that's in the center. The um, gutters are very strange. They're not a regular shape. They're like a half moon. And so underneath there, the wood comes at an angle. So the base of the fixture is all the way up. The only way you'd see them is if you stood underneath my gutter. We talked about doing landscape ones across the patio or the walkway, but they would have had to dig underneath that original 
pathway. Correct. So to dig underneath in order to do it in this in like a much simpler solution. And the lighting is not very bright just so that it um, illuminates the walkway side of our house. It's mixture. It's like the light is coming out from the sides. It looks like a wall mount that I feel yeah. what's confusing us versus mm -hmm. a mount to the underside of a gutter box facing down. Looks like it's mounted to the wall facing 90 degrees down. Um, you're it, it is. It is. Mm -hmm. Enough light in the yeah. down light component. It's it's more, but this will light. only this is only a down lighting. But the down light's going to Okay. I think what, what we're confused about is so you're stopping, like you said, you got the half round gutter. Yeah. Your fascia board is at an angle, it's not straight up and down. Yeah. And under your stop it picks back up at an angle. So you have basically a V-shaped action point with the brick wall flat 90 degrees here. Yeah. So mounting this fixture. Yeah, I totally understand what you're saying. I Honestly, I can't remember the guy told me, but he said that it'll go, you know, completely straight down. So they put it on that block, they have to block it. Or mount it. Or mount it right to the brick. Or, you know, that's why I asked him yeah. to speak yeah. about it. And, it and I, seem... I don't think like a decorative picture is appropriate there to, to begin with. I don't either. I mean, I, it's certainly not that picture. Well, I don't think you're seeing the picture, though. You're only. Seeing light come down from the fixture. Yeah. You're not but, seeing the but fixture. a much more utilitarian light source would ensure that we wouldn't be seeing the fixture. And and, and I'm gonna make the point that you are you are as opposed to landscape lighting where you have to dig up the brick, etc. That can be repaired. This is damaging for a fabric of building. You get the wiring and everything. Damaging how kind of run holes through it and everything else to get the wire to these light fixtures. So wire is on the outside. Surface, Surface mounting through a um a, a, through a very small conduit in between where the brick and the um, wood come together. So if you look at page six, basically tucking that conduit up into that crevice where the wood meets the brick. Robin, there. I think what we need is is for us to really understand how it's all come to coming together. I don't think it sounds like we're not understanding how it's mounting. Might be yeah. good to have the vendor do a sketch, kind of cutting across that gutter perpendicular, showing how that fish is supposed to mount. Just because the fish you have here, the mounting piece of the fixture don't rotate. It looks like. So it looks like if we mount this to the to the underside of your soffit, it's going to be pointing down at a forty five degree angle yeah, to the ground instead of straight right down. Yeah. Um, we he told me only one was fitting, but it obviously seems like they would all have to fit it. You have to get straight down. Yeah. That goes straight down. Yeah. So maybe it's the, that they're intending for this to be on all the other spots. And that wouldn't be at the driveway. I'm not sure. I think it might be worthwhile continuing the application and have the vendor just do a hand sketch because continuing as we still have people rifling through our cars and down the alley. That's um so even if I even if they were all pivoted, would there still be a problem with having copper? I mean, we selected the most expensive, which are copper lighting because. My brick is orange and I wanted it to, you know, blend in, even though you won't see it unless you're standing directly underneath. Um, and so. Won't you see it from the front of the building looking down the side? No. You can't see up underneath that soffit up behind the gutter at all? No. Down. But standing at the front of your house, I remember when this house came up for the addition work, you can see underneath that soffit all the way up, all the way down. 
you will see every single one of those fixtures in the front of the house looking up underneath it. Like if I'm standing up on, on, the, the, on the sidewalk yeah. you know, all the way down. I mean, it comes I, down. I, I, if I can see that, if I can see that in the picture, I'm going to see it in reality. I just lurking where the lights are going. Go, go back to the other picture. Yeah, any one of those. Yeah. If you can take a picture of that, I can see. And we see down lighting all the time everywhere. So yeah, you know, it's not decorative and not highly polished copper. Not necessarily approved by the commission. Yeah, that's true. Um, all right. Well, thank you for your time. My opinion would be that you definitely don't want to have anything mounted cutting into the socket, which you're not proposing in this application. I think that's going for you in your application. I think a fixture that is more muted and kind of hides and blends would be more appropriate as opposed to, I, I understand the desire for the copper, the, the, the polished nature of it makes it stand out, which is, this is what we're looking for, for, for down lighting, any kind of lighting. So how would it be a fix then? So, one option, and this is just spitballing here, if this fixture here, if this would come in something more of like a muted black, something that would kind of hide more, you could mount those along. You can angle that to be straight down. It's only two and a half inches in diameter, as opposed to four. It does come in black. I, I don't know if it does or not. No, it does. I'm telling you it does. I think to me, if we were going to approve a downlight, something small that could hide up there could be angled to come down, I would definitely want to have a, a hand sketch of how that all comes yeah, together yeah. there, how it mounts. So that's what we're missing, I think, to understand what's what's being. But that's it's my opinion. The downlights mission. Yeah, so they want to mount it where it can't be seen, but also not invade up in. So I don't know if those two things are physically possible. What kind of lighting do you like um, that is, you know, on the ground? So pictures like these on the yeah. ground, pointing up, yeah. that happens all the time. That being low, that's not a problem for us. Okay. It's not attached to the to the structure. And when it's on the ground, to me, yeah. it doesn't matter to me what color it is on the ground. Then it's just decorative though, not really providing much in the way of light. Ground yeah. mounted will do everything that your that your light fixture you, you want out of your reach. I disagree with that. Okay. <laughs> I think if you if you um, mount it, it's gonna light the ground light. An accent light on the side, but I don't think it's going to throw much light into the space. Yeah, three point way up. We can also put pathway lights in. Yeah. It depends on, I think the objective is to get the space illuminated. Okay. Yeah. It's very dark on the side of our house. We don't have any lights. Um, we have one light over our side door. That is it. I'd ask this question to the commission. I know we, we've discussed in the past back and forth about adding lighting at doors versus not. Is is door lighting where it doesn't exist better or worse condition than adding a small down light under the eaves? Me, I think small down light up to under the eaves is. Better application than putting all the lights up. I would agree. But the decorative lights by the door is a marker that that's the main entrance. But we're trying to get away from that too. Seems seems to me that the bullet light that's proposed, if it were in the black, would work along the whole length. 
And the key is just the mounting details. Since it's on the knuckle, you don't have a lot of flexibility with aiming at it. Yeah, I would agree. Right. Right. To show that later. Then the bistro light. Permanent and like Christmas lights. Oh, the string lights? Yeah. yeah. So there's a sign. That's permanent. Okay. All right. Okay. So, yeah, we can have them back, get better angle, change the color, and uh, when's the next provide a mounting? Catch up where. But we could put the string lights up, have light back there. The, the deadline for new applications is the sixth, but if it's continued application, you're already on the you can stay on the docket and just provide the updated information. Okay, all right, perfect. Thanks a lot. And in the meantime, if you need to put up a security light or something back there, do the security, put a temporary security light up for the time being. I don't think we'd have a problem with it as long as it's not damaging or fixing into the brick or we'll the fact that it's there. So, thanks. Continue this while you yeah. the, uh, mm -hmm. thanks. Thank you. Good. Item one nine GV twenty one dash twelve dash zero two two five forty three Mohawk Street. I move to continue. Second. Question of the motion. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Ayes have it. Motion passes. Uh, item ten GV dash two one dash one two dash zero two three one four five East Livingston. Applicant for 145 East Livingston. He is unable to attend. I think I've been having represented, but they will to retain one, so he will not be able to be here for 145. Okay. Table it, or do you want to just continue? I'll uh, continue. Um, GV 21-12-02-3. GV 21-12-02-3. 145 East Livingston Avenue, I'm going to continue. Second. Question on the motion. Those in favor? Aye. Yes. I have it. Motion passes. Ten uh, item 11, GV 21 12 024 827 South 3rd Street. That's me. Please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. Please state your name for the record. Jim Meeker, Bradley Builders. Sure. Order. Proposed work description is to install new asphalt roof on rear addition on West Elevation. Install new gray metal ridge roll cap for rear addition with ridge vent ventilation. Install new underlayment and ice bar protection under drip edge flashing. Install new fixed lux skylight with lux flashing pit and same location as existing skylight. Applicant is proposing to use certainty carriage house, gay house, slate, which is not on the approved shingles list. Tech analysis applicant is requesting to use alternative color of the carriage house style shingle, which is from the approved shingles list. Applicant is proposing this since the approved stone gate gray color is not available. It won't be available until summer 2022. Tech proposes this application to be a test case with request that the applicant brings in samples of the proposed colors um, gate house slate as well as colonial slate. At the past December business meeting, Commission inquired. Why they are choosing this from the other preferred shingles on the approved shingles list. Commissioners also requested a cut sheet of the skylights for the profile of new and existing, as well as size of the new and existing. Commissioners requested that applicant bring in samples of proposed color gatehouse slate, as well as colonial slate to the hearing. Applicant responded and stated that the existing size of the skylight is 22 inches by 46 inches, which the proposed skylight will match the same dimensions as existing. They also say that the color that is proposed has been chosen since it is the only color available. Due to the manufacturing problems related to the labor shortages due to the pandemic. Staff recommends approval with all any and all clarifications to be submitted to HBO staff for review and approval prior to issuance of the certificate. With additions, this color choice will be considered a test case for a new color option due to the delayed production of the approved shingle color based off of 31 16 11 standard for alteration number nine. Anything else to add? Uh, I brought the data sheet and the architectural drawing of the skylights, and I emailed everybody the, the information from Certainty, the manufacturer, that there really is no, as you said, summer of 2022. They, they're not even committing to any date oh. to restart production on Carriage House. Those, those production lines have been shut down completely 
due to labor shortages due to COVID. And the only color available currently is the this one here, the gatehouse slate, which is another shade of gray, very much similar to stone gate gray. That is an approved color. There's three shades of gray that this style of shingle comes in the carriage house. And they all fade, they don't stay the same color, just like the slate roofs in German Village. They all fade, they all change colors. I feel that it's not going to affect the historic significance of the color, the style of German Village using really any one of these three shades of gray. My question is, is there any other slate that's approved shingle, or any other slate, any other approved shingle that's similar to this that you've investigated that is available? No, no, there, there's no similar shingle to carriage house that's on the approved list. Okay. okay. It's the, you know, it's the dog ear. Yeah. Okay. The actual slate look. My opinion, I, I don't want to make this a test case because I don't want to go forward with this. But I, I'm willing to approve an exception due to logistics and delivery schedule due to the pandemic. Like, and I can just say, like the urgent. Yeah, in a way. Because um, I'm experiencing, yeah, in hardship is, yeah, different deal. Different deal. Yeah. Much more complicated. We'll talk about that later. But because um, I'm in construction, I'm experiencing the same thing. We're having to stuff, stuff all over the place um, on the fly. There are several shingles on the approval list that aren't there. Yeah, I, I understand that. So no, I, but not I, just the stone. The homeowner wants the dog, the dog tail look. Yeah. You know, that, that this is the only shingle on the approval list that has the dog tail. And, you know, and I, it's a proof shingle. The colors off them with a group. I, I, again, I would not go for a, a test case. I would go for an exception due to I just results of the pandemic. I see a sample post. It's just it's first. As with all asphalt shingles, they are susceptible to fading and changing. This this really isn't exactly what it's going to be. Stone Stonia Gray is the approved gatehouse slate. I think it's just a tiny bit dark. So in, in reality, it's going to fade probably closer to the real stone gate gray. Stone gate gray would say to it much lighter. And for commission's purposes, the gatehouse slate is, is still being produced. No, no, it doesn't have the production. It's just it's, it's stock. Stock. You say it's stock. It's it's out of stock, out of production, an unknown date. I have the paperwork from certain team. So that is that that's for the stone house. But the stone gate gray is is not being done. No carriage house. No, none of these are base for this at all. So Proposing this because you have material. It is available. We have these available. It's not making any more. It's not making okay. any more colors of any. And these, and this color is sold out. Okay. And these two colors are available. There's none of these are available. The five colors, or six colors aren't available. There is a little bit of colonial slate and gatehouse slate. But the colonial slate is several states away. The gatehouse slate is in Columbus. There's just enough to do this job. Okay. I just want to see if we need to change the approved list temporarily or not. But if there, I, I don't know who gets the emails I sent, but there's certainty that suspended production of all carriage house. But if they go today, I'll save it too. So if it's going to be, um, but I'll add it to your page. Okay. That information needs to be provided to the And is, is there a way, morning, just for in house purposes, to make a note? On the website, the PDF to say that as of right now, this is the information we have. We attach that PDF to it or something that make reference to it. Yeah. Just so other homeowners are going, don't select it, try mm -hmm. to approve, get pushed through with it, find out the king. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can talk to uh, Any questions or comments? Well, I just want to add something. How are we on board with making this an exception to the, to the logistics issues under the current conditions? Okay, if we're on. Yeah, 
work with that. Yeah. All right. So this we're we're weighing it here, buddy. It is leak. His home is leaking. It does need to be done. Yeah, I get that. That that's a logistical problem. Yeah, that way you don't set the cement every time we're out of these kind of problems. Right, I agree. This is more of a labor force. In the manufacturing. The, the manufacturing. Because yeah, when I say labor, I'm thinking of roofers, and that's not going to fly. But in manufacturing. In manufacturing a, labor force. Okay, so item gp 211204 827 south third street i move to approve as submitted due to logistics problems of available material caused by the pandemic specifically and one added clarification that it is a approved type of style shingle. style change style yeah, and, and the, the exception is to the color it's a color is closed to the Question on the motion. Those in favor? Aye. Yes. Have it. Motion passes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Do I leave the stuff with you, Morgan? Do you ask me for the data sheet? Um, yes. On the skylights and the cover. Thank you very much. Moving ahead to item number 12, GB-21-12-025, 123 Please raise your right hand. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and the truth. Please state your name for the record. Thank you. Proposed work description to remove 56 horn beam trees, youngling, and one mature hackberry tree. Replace horn beams with 36. 60 by 8 feet horn beams in the same location, but with more spacing. Work to be done by Davy Tree Company, who recommends the removal of tree that was showing signs of decay. As stated, this provided our first report. A neighbor at 129 East Deschler in an agreement with the removal of the Hackberry horn beams. Applicant will repair fencing like for like where the Hackberry is located after removed. Staff analysis applicant has provided a tree assessment from the Davy Tree Company, stating that the present condition of the Hackberry trees. Staff also informed applicant that planting a new tree in the same location or close by is typically recommended to replace the removed mature tree. Applicant responded that since it was a neighboring tree, they do not have the intention of replanting in the same spot as they intend to close the hole in the fence where the tree was located. They also say that the horn beams follow the fence line and there are many trees in that area. Staff recommends approval of any all clarification to be submitted to HPO staff to review and approval prior issuance of a certificate of condition. That a new tree be planted in, if not in the same spot, but at least somewhere close by to replace the mature tree. This is based off of 3116.13, standard for site improvements, letter A. Anything else to add? Questions, comments from the commission? What, um, what type of corn beam are you replacing with? Or three agronomy? No, it just says corn beam. There are um, this digit type corn beams so that would fit this space much better, great spontaneous. I think that's part of the issue here is it looks like this was planted with standard corn beams. Um, so my suggestion would be that you could use this digit one so you're not having to cut down trees 10 years from now. This is approved, and I would strongly support um, adding a shade tree somewhere to replace the hackberry that's being removed. Commissioner Coy, just for my personal knowledge, she said, "Yes, digit, plus digit, plus digit, spell <laughs> that plus plus that." Gotcha. Plus. With the owner. So, and the reason for the RB replacement is there are the the trees, the trees that are being removed, as I believe they are in they're not in good condition. No, but this basil that made.
where the shock of its days of It's just on the half. It's just on the half bear. The hornbeaks I don't think are suffering other than the large. They are planted quite close together. Right? But I also think that there could have been a possibility that they could have been sheared back. If the issue is the width of growth out into the yard. Yes, I would like to understand why the horn beams are being removed. As far as the hack here goes, I see the report and I see that it should be removed. I just don't know who should be putting back. If we're pushing for a shade tree, where should it go? Which side of the fence should it be? Look at the page five, it looks like the majority is on one side of the fence, the opposite side of the fence. Wouldn't say put it would be out there to put a tree back in the middle of the fence. No. But I don't know how I could say one neighbor or the other should have to be the one to plant the trees in the garden. That tree needs you. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Neighbors now the apple test. I just I just don't see a way to push one or the other. Well, we could also say that a tree needs to be replaced and the work out is gonna be planned. How can we force that? Need to be. The applicant says the neighbors said we're going to do it. The process would be more. Than that. Well, I think I think we'd have to say that right now we'd have to table this and ask for more information on where they would. Plant the replacement tree or who's going to plant it. And sort of like a wetland district. Mm -hmm. Now, I think we need to continue to the horn because anyway to get more information about that with things. Not sure what's happening with them. What right. the species is not opposed to replacing within the horn beam, but I think we need to have more information about that. Plan is, and if we can't approve based upon that, I think we'll just remove the applicant to <coughs> discuss that with the client. Yeah, I mean, my issue is this is a critical to remove a large number of trees. And I'd like to understand why. And, uh, the hackberry is a significant contributing tree. In this picture here, is that the half bear? Does it look healthy? It's hard to tell on that photo, but I think that probably is. Okay. I mean, there's also a metal front. Okay. 
you know, that you could be. I mean, I understand when you've got two trunks like that, and that um, crotch angle is so small, that does result in trees that are less strong. So you can see how one side of that could split off with a lot of ice or wind. It doesn't have the same strength. But you can also cable those together to make them stronger. I think the Fabry report mentioned that second last sentence. Right, they did. But then they also mentioned that there are a couple of other issues with the yeah. Yeah. So, given that you know, we could approve the removal. I would like to see a replacement tree go somewhere. I think you hear that still more information the commission needs. I, I apologize not having that information, not bring that up at the business meeting. We didn't have our landscape expert <laughs> there to point out the uh, the warm beam replacement prevention. So, would you like to continue application for, for next month? Well, go back to the client or would like to see? Yes, can we go back to them and bring it forward again next month? Sure. Yes. So, if we can continue, it'll be, it'll be on the agenda already. So, okay. just provide any additional information to. And I'll send out the review of what we've done today. Okay, great. Okay. Great. Now, is there a motion? Item number 12, GB 2112 025 123 East Dashler Avenue. Uh, Move to continue. Second. Any questions on the motion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Standard motion passes. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, on to item 13 GB 21 12 026251 Jackson Street. Raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and the truth. I do. Please state your name for the record. Julie Bullock. Um, for the work description, it's various recommendations. Lot area is 3,404.3 square feet. House is 1,652.8 square feet or 48.84%. Rear yard is 194.5 square feet or 5%, 5.73%. Existing living area is 1,523.76%. Converted existing shed to living space is 319.2 square feet. New garage is 237.2 square feet. Additionally, 178 square feet. Variances are 3312 25 maneuvering for the south rural space from 20 feet to 18 feet. And a variance is needed for the surface space from 20 feet to 16 feet. 33, 32, 25 feet, maximum side yard required to allow for the existing maximum side yard of zero feet in lieu of the required 9.4 feet. 33, 32, 26C, two minimum side yard permitted to allow for a minimum side yard of zero feet on the east and west properly line, property line in lieu of the required five feet. 33, 32, 27 yard yards to allow for a rear yard of 5.7, 73%. Or 195.4 square feet in lieu of a required 25%. Staff analysis the application was originally seen as conceptual at the September Commission hearing, providing comments are taken for the approved September 7th, 2021 Durham Village Commission hearing minutes. Commissioner suggested to separate roof line from addition to existing garage, suggested adding a garage door at the back of the converted garage to gain access back to the property. Commissioner requested a 3D model to present for this plan to help visualize the connector between the existing garage and the existing structure. Commissioner requested to expose the corners of the garage and back corner of the main house when adding the connector. Commission noted that applicant might need a variance for the turning radius as opposed to the one part garage. Commission noted that the applicant will need to watch for, for the overhang along the back property line. Applicant states the shed portion on the back structure that they proposed to remove was turned. The bathroom was completely altered. All the material, the addition to the room was done by current owner and their own source. New garage will be nine feet by 18 feet. At the past December business meeting, commissioners asked for clarification of the two new single family dwelling units listed in 3332 037 R2F variants, as well as labeling existing proposed conditions and the variances. Applicants has responded to the incorrect variances for the project and has updated them as listed above. 
Anything else to add? Um, I can't remember how many of you were at the meeting where we went through this project pretty thoroughly. Um, right now, we're just looking for approval on the variances. We did make the modifications. I scaled it back so we were under the 50%, and I pulled the connections back behind the garage and the, you know, as you had proposed. Um, the maneuvering variances, I think, have been added. Um, one thing that I didn't know is that they don't take it from the parking space in the garage, they take it from the face of the garage. So, technically, really, maneuvering variance is only needed for the uh, parking space, not the one in the garage. But by city FOMA standards, I have to request it. The maximum, minimum side yards are existing conditions. And of course, I think we had talked previously that the rear yard, we're kind of trading off the rear yard so that we don't build in the side yard so that we can keep the exposure of the historic block structure. Questions, comments from the commission? Uh, this came up at the last meeting we had last month. Let's see the person we discussed it with. Um, we haven't approved a COA for the actual project yet, have we? No. No, right now we're still working on the variances. Yeah, and I, I brought this up last time where we approved, recommend the variances after we've approved the project. And I mean, I, that, that was always my understanding. I mean, you guys want complete construction documents. So um, typically, I've always done it after the variance is approved just because we don't want the client to have to invest all that money in permit drawings. And we don't see complete construction documents here. So we don't need that, but we need enough information to know what the design is so we can approve it. But I did include elevations and I did make some of the yeah. changes you suggested. And, and, and I, I certainly think you were on board with all of that. Yeah. So I'm I'm kind of curious why why we would not be here approving that now and then creating the variances post approval uh, because, of the design. I mean, typically we want to make sure that you guys and BZA are going to and say BZA has been somewhat difficult lately. Um, is when you approve the variances before they invest a ton of time in the drawings. We understand, of course, that if you guys don't approve the design, um, then we'll have to, you know, come back. But um, my the feedback that I got from you guys at the last meeting that was that the design was close and there were some details to work out that we would show in the permit drawings. And that's why we felt comfortable going ahead and getting the recommendations. It's also, you know, timeline issues and getting someone to do a 3D rendering, they're six months out. So, <laughs> you know, again, there's a lot of issues associated. So we just want to make sure we're, you know, okay on the variances before we. Um, I have apprehension and, and concerns of risk of approving variances for a, an unknown project. Well, well, we're not approving the variances. We're, we're recommending, recommending. Yeah. yeah, so. Which is good as yeah. going to be the old. So, what maybe I could delay your concerns. Is there is the footprint of the project static? Yes, okay. for sure. And is there anything on the elevations that's still in flux, or is that pretty much static? I think it's pretty much static as well. Okay. Unless you guys have any issues with something, but yeah. I was just surprised that you're asking for the variance when the but the design was pretty well set. And I and that's where I'm still at. Is there anything on the design that's up on the screen that I do right now? No, but they're not asking for a COA for the design. It's not here. It's what they do is only variance what they're asking for is this would be doing. Would you be more comfortable if they ask for the Yeah. Because well, that's what we always used to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. Ready to ask for the Sure. <laughs> now you're you comfortable for the design of those policy? Not if you're not, because I didn't prepare myself to look at it and make sure that it was everything that we had agreed to before. Path forward for you there.
that be a design conference for this project? I'm sorry, question. Mm -hmm. You have the design comments that were made on this application previously that we could be that could be read out, checked. Yeah. Yes, I did read that on the staff analysis. That's what I have submitted yeah. before. But that's cool. Do you want me to read them again? Well, we just go through the one by one and like bullet items. Yeah. Did we just to check that yes, this was done and this. Okay. Um, the first item on the approved minutes from September, the commissioner suggested to separate the line from addition to existing room. Julia, feel free to just point out. We did. We just we basically raised the connector up and looked at how they were interacting with the existing roof lines to respond to that comment. Um, there was also a comment about tucking behind the existing structure. We made that modification. Um, didn't do the overhead door in the back of the garage. The plane just didn't feel like they needed it. We did a person door, but not an overhead door. We're a little bit concerned about safety and locking and et cetera. I think that was, are there any other comments? Um, yes, I get garage door in the back or the garage to gain access. Um, which is right in the one. Uh, the commissioner requested a 3D model to present for this plan to help visualize the connector. Um, Commissioner requested to expose the corners of the garage. Um, commission noted that applicant might need a variance to the turning radius. Commissioner noted that applicant will need to watch for the overhang off the back property line. That turning radius variance it really isn't the maneuvering variance, is what it's called. I believe we have to address the comments. The overhang along the back. So that's for the garage looking at stage 12. We have 1.82 feet from the property line. Looking at your elevation proposed on page 14. They're letting me just fire rate it and wrap this off it. So what's the plan? Because it's considered a projection. You know, yeah. Plans examiners are interpreting a little differently. Yeah, we have, that always changes every time. Do, every, every project changes. Makes sense though. First, yeah, I, I think the design is developed enough. This situation, I'm, I'm okay recommending the variances based on what's been dropping with us. So, is the recommendation for the variances conditional on these drawings? It's, a, it's conditional on the footprint shown here, the elevation shown here. Any major tweaks to what the show? Just as long as all of that is bound into this application and is part of their role. Uh, to me, I think one of the questions about other applications was the single property, single project versus the properties that are not. Yeah, that, that's a different situation. I agree. Yes, any objection to that? Works for me. Is there a motion? I move on application GB 21 12 026 251 Jackson Street to approve the, ac the application as uh, verified, or approve the application as amended to. Ask for design approval as well as uh, recommendation of the variances and clarification of design to be that the uh, proposed flat roof does separate 
that, that the connector does separate the existing historic building from the new construction. The overhang at the new garage is allowed uh, by the building department in wrapped in fire rated materials, and the client declined to add the garage door to the backyard for convenience, addressing the previous design comments. And uh, I guess we are striking 3332 down. Got the experience. Here's the new Okay. And the variances to be recommended are 3312.25 maneuvering uh, for the south garage space uh, to reduce from 20 feet to 18 feet and to reduce the surface area of space from 20 feet to 16. 3332.25b maximum side yard required to allow the existing maximum side yard of zero feet in view of the required 9.4 feet as an existing condition. Uh, 3332.26C2, minimum side yard committed to allow for minimum side yard of zero feet on the east and west property line in view of the required five feet, which I also will be existing. And 3332.27 rear yard to allow for a rear yard of 5.73% or 195.4 square feet per feet in lieu of the required 25 feet. Is that also from an existing condition? Julie, which one of these is not an existing condition that you're asking the parents for? The maneuvering one? I'm sorry? Which one of these are not existing conditions that you're asking for? Which of them are not existing? Yeah. Um, the maneuvering and well, the rear yard. Okay. That's, yeah, that's not correct. That's not correct. The yeah, new the agenda. Let's see. What she read is correct. My fault. I thought that was updated. That was my fault. Sorry. Is there? Is that like four of them the same? So maneuvering is a new condition. Maximum side yard required is a new condition or existing? It's existing. It's the garage in the house. Right. Okay. Together. Minimum side yard permitted. That's existing. Existing in the rear yard. The rear yard is, um, they were still under the required rear yard before I added the little garage. So it was existing non compliant, but I got yeah. Okay, so this is basically just bringing everything into compliance. Yeah. Regardless of what the design is. Except for the new. Okay, good. But I, yeah, I mean, it's, you got, I'm, okay. There you go. <laughs> we get there eventually. Is there, is there a second on the motion? Second. Any okay. questions on the motion? Those in favor? Uh, Aye. Against? Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you. Sorry to be difficult. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on to item number 14, GB 21 12 027, 862 Mohawk Street. Raise your right hand. Right, tell the truth. Right, tell the truth. The whole truth and the truth. I do. William Dugas, architect. Sure. Proposed work description is removal of existing garage built in the 1980s and build new garage with guest suite above, no kitchen included. Proposed exterior materials for new garage, foundation concrete block. Siding for garage can be shaped, manufactured by Jake Carney with modern corners, trim borals, roofing, GAS slate line, or per GBC roofing list. Gutters, six inches prep and OG K gutters, round down stumps, and prep and drip edge flashing. Balcony will be constructed with ice wood sections, 20 inches square, for to be natural and be selected later from it with HP staff review and approval. Windows, metal clad, glass, wood window, as manufactured by Marvin, no casing. Garage door, eight panel, smooth flush wood with one by four trim, floral, as provided, or prep and metal, and glass, secure, as manufactured by closing uh, eight panel. Staff analysis, application was recently recommended for variances of November 3rd, 2021, during the Village Commission hearing, with the conditions to amend to remove the refrigerator and sink from the interior floor plan, as well as to commit to the massing and volume with no change when submitting an application to build a proposed carriage house. Staff recommends approval with any all clarification to be submitted to HPO staff for review and approval prior to issuance of a certificate. Based off of 3116-14 standards for demolition, 3116-12 standards for new construction, and German Village Guidelines, new buildings, surrounding now buildings, page 113, number one. That's it. That's it. We're up for uh, City Council next week.
but nothing has changed from the conceptual review that we did. Um, of course, landscaping and paint color will be at a later date. Questions, comments from the commission? One, one uh, amendment to it, I have a seven foot one spring line from the second floor to the roof. I need to increase that one inch for door purposes. But other than that, I could lower the roof pitch uh, a half foot or six inches per foot if, if that yes made it feel better for you guys. I don't know whether you slightly over the height of the house to the south. A three. If I if I lower it, um, the nine twelve pitch to an eight twelve, it saves nine inches. So your pleasure. Say so nine inches, it puts it at the exact height next door, correct? It, it will be extremely close, yeah. Based, based on sheet six. Why did you pick 12 over nine? Why did I pick it? Uh, because of the height next door to the south. Okay. I didn't want to overwhelm it, even though it sits, the gable sits back from this space. Yeah. You can go to the east elevation. Mm -hmm. Page six. That's the relationship with the 912. Say so you need an extra inch. I need an extra inch at the spring line on the second floor. So I can adjust the roof slope for your desires. There. So, and we're calling this a garage with a guest suite instead of a carriage house? It's correct. It won't get an address. It, it can't be separated at this point. You have to go through the whole process again. There's no kitchen. We've altered the floor plans and removed the sink and the refrigerator. Questions? So, this seems to be the continuation of the proliferation of carriage houses, even though it's not a carriage house. It's the same mass in there as well. Yes. Well, I'm nervous about adding these yeah. structures to smaller houses. Yeah. That's Lots with smaller houses. The house, the main house is a two story house. It's this carriage house is smaller than the footprint of the main house. Good big 17. Make an alley in this area feels like a street, actually. Yeah. It's one of the few alleys that actually do that. Yeah, this is what we talked about. The conceptual. Looks like yeah, there's a house they locked off the top at some point in the past. Yeah, it's not nasty white, much bigger than anything on Lansing. Yeah, the main house is actually taller because it has a 12 12 roof pitch. But it has a house, house. So we're using uh, shakes on this carriage house because of the main house. And our intention is to be natural brick on the brick screen wall facing uh, make an alley. At this point, I picked the brick out of Ocean Blend uh, from what is called Line, but we haven't reviewed it with the owner yet. So, be back for colors and landscaping. Okay. 
other comments, questions? Any motion? Item GV 2112-027862, Mohawk Street. I move to approve as submitted. Second. Any questions on the motion? In favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Seven. Motion passes. Thank you. Item 15, GV 21 12 028846, South 5th Street. The record show, Mr. Chief, still on the record. Proposed work description at second floor addition to first floor addition. It was previously built in 2018 with no change in footprint. All exterior material to match existing addition. Steer cladding to be four inch wood lack siding to match previous approval for COA number 18748. Roof to be asphalt shingles for improved shingle slits to match existing addition roof for previous approval. Um, same COA number as before. Gutters to be half rounded to be match uh, previous approval as well. Windows to be two over two, double hung, sashed, match previous approval as well. Uh, staff analysis and addition was approved in June 2018 to extend the second story roof line where existing roof line is today. A first floor addition to the existing two story addition was approved in December 2018 with the same materials used for the previous addition. The December business meeting, commissioners requested a full elevation drawing of the east elevation to better understand the basis of the addition. Commissioners also requested staff to designate and uh, dates drawing for better clarification. Staff recommends approval with any all clarification to be submitted to HPO staff to review and approval prior to issuance of certificate based off the German Village guidelines, page 93 additions. I didn't, uh, wasn't able to send them electronically. I was concerned that when we get here, so I printed up copies of the north elevation. First two sheets are the same as submittal original. The client that bought this structure under development 2018 um, as an elderly parent they're considering this house has a first floor bedroom suite so it's ideal for that but it makes living for him a little tight so he wanted to explore the expansion of the second floor back bedroom and he would probably use it more of as a living space plus his parent is living there Just to make sure I've got the timeline sequence. The current two floor addition, existing two floor addition, that was done in 18, 2018. The one floor addition to that addition was done very late in the same year. Okay. So, we're, so we've had like three projects the main renovation, the garage. The expansion of the living room, first floor, and then the expansion of the garage because the space was so horrible, he had storage above the garage with no plumbing or anything up there. Can't see it from the public. But the essence we're talking about is extending the 2008 edition in an ineffectual Yeah. Questions? How much the commission? There's no concerns. Is there any motion? Um, item GV 2112 028 I 846 up 5th Street and move to approve as submitted. 
second. Question on the motion. Look in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? I say have it. Motion passes. Thank you very much. I promise not to come back with this project ever again. <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep. <laughs> Item number 16, GV-21-12-029, 578 South 6th Street. Please raise your right hand. Where tell the truth, the whole truth, the truth. Please state your name, ma'am. You. All the form. You. Proposed work description. Please make the oh, commissioner. I need to skip on one second. Thanks. Okay. Uh, proposed work description. This application is seeking approval to construct a structure pergola to replace the existing one pergola. No modifications to the existing building are required. All construction will adhere to Columbus zoning and building code. Structure posts, frame, and louvers are bronze in color. Staff has not um, staff has not been able to locate a COA for the approval of the existing one pergola. Commissioner is required at the outdoor fireplace to speak to COA either. Um, Applicant responded stating that the pergola was there when they purchased the property in 2016. Commissioners inquired what the materials would be for the proposed pergola, which was verified as metal. Applicant has mentioned that a previous metal pergola was constructed at 578 South 5th Street recently. Staff has verified that the December 2020 hearing at Trek Pergola, made out of Lima, has been approved and issued a COA number GB 2012-037. Applicant has provided a sample photo of that approved finished product. Staff recommends approval. Then you'll all clarifications be sent to the HBO staff for review and approval prior to issuance of the certificate with conditions that the pergola be built of wood and not of a new proposed metal material or design. This is based off the German Village guidelines, new buildings, garage, and now building, page 132, number 16. Thank you. Anything else to add? Questions, comments from the commission? Are you still asking for a metal pergola or are you asking for a wood? It's metal. Is visible from the street at all? No, it's not. I didn't notice in the application, maybe there, what's the finished color post for the structure? Old bronze. But it's like a, I thought it was black, but they call it bronze. The more color, just a little darker. <coughs> you can flip to page 31. That brought there. Oh, there's one left. Correct. That's behind a six foot fence. See the top two feet of the alley of John. That was concerns. Mm -hmm. 
thirst damping in urine. Okay. Now, questions or concerns? Is there a motion? I move on application GB 21 12 029 578 South 6th Street to approve the application as submitted. Second. Any question on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, against? I have it. Motion passes. Very much. We're going to item number all seventeen. Before you go back, it's going to be GV dash two one dash one two dash zero three zero one three three Thurman. Here she comes. You both, please raise your right hand. Square and tell the truth, the whole truth, and the truth. Yes. Yes. Please state your names for the record. Logan Fitch. Eric Cheryl. Proposed work description. Applicant is seeking support and recommendation for the parcel split in combination shown in the master plan. All lots are proposed to be single family homes with the exception of one parcel that were made to provide parking for a commercial building at the southwest corner of Thurman Avenue, South 4th Street. Some parcels are proposed to have dwelling units plus attached garage. It is understood by applicant that support approval of parcel arrangements does not infer support or approval of the building design. Proposed variances are 3332037R2F residential district to permit two detached single family dwelling units on the same parcel, parcels one, three, five, and six, consisting of a detached single family dwelling fronting Thurman Avenue and a detached carriage house slash garage with one dwelling unit into parking spaces. Oh, sorry, into permit. Reserve A for vehicular access to multiple parcels and utilities and to permit eight parking spaces on parcel 11. Variance 33, 12, 25 maneuvering to reduce maneuvering for garage and service parking spaces from 20 feet to 0 feet to 3 feet for parcels 1 through 10. For parcels 11 from 20 feet to 2 feet, subject to an easement on Reserve A and subject to easements on parcels 12 through 14 for parcel 11 to provide not less than 20 feet total maneuvering. 332105A1 B2 vision clearance to reduce the 30 feet by 30 feet clear vision triangle at the intersection of Thurman Avenue and South 4th Street and parcel 1 to 10 feet by 10 feet. 332205 area district lot width requirements to reduce lot width from 50 feet to 22 feet through 41 feet. 332214R2F area district requirements to reduce lot area from 6,000 square feet to 1,540 square feet. To 5,162 square feet and from 6,000 square feet to 1,200 square feet through 4,332 square feet based on law area limitations, section 3332 HMC, based on area being with times three times the width. I don't, I don't mean to interrupt you. Oh, yeah. I'm going to kind of go through these one at a time because I have each, I have an exhibit for each okay. one. That is fine. <laughs> is that, if that, that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> If you folks, okay. I, I mean, I know this is complicated. We we talked about it uh, uh, in quite a bit last time we were here. I don't care if I say. I'm not gonna be mad about it. So, uh, unfortunately, uh, our zoning consultant had a uh, existing conflict with a different area commission this evening and was not able to actually be here in person. Um, he and I kind of talked through this, um, and we talked about your, uh, your concerns about um, the variances being used. You know, um, you granted to these properties and then being used, uh, you know, for, for a different purpose somehow. Um, and uh, he and I kind of brainstormed together and kind of came up with. Um, a solution that is kind of like we proposing a motion for you guys to um, use that would have kind of the language that would kind of cut through some of that concern or assuage some of those fears. Um, I, would, I would gladly read that uh, now um, so that as I go through um, the variance items and the exhibits, um, you can kind of keep 
what we're really trying to achieve in mind. Is that does that seem okay with you folks? Sure. Okay. Um, the um, motion would go something like this. I'm not not making a motion for you. Um, certificates of appropriateness is. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, a recommendation for the variances with following conditions. Certificates of appropriateness for buildings on any parcel will not be issued until the applicant has satisfied the German Village Commission architectural review process. Variance recommendations are granted to allow the applicant to proceed with zoning, engineering, and platting of the parcels through both Franklin County and City of Columbus processes with the understanding that the scale of this particular project and the number of parcels involved uh, create this unique and unavoidable necessity. It isn't possible to process this project on a parcel by parcel basis because of zoning, platting, and engineering processes with the city. And finally, variance recommendations with regard to setbacks, building lines, and lot coverage do not incur that architecture meeting those maximums will be approved. Is that does anyone have any questions about those statements or conditions? I think it worked. That works. Okay, great. Um, so I think let's just kind of um, the eight floor that she's already on kind of has the whole map and then all of the variances. But it might be easier just to kind of cruise through the different. Um, uh, each page because I've kind of broken the exhibits down or the variances down by um, which parcels they apply to. Okay. Um, so variance one applies to the parcels in blue um, is basically to allow uh, multiple dwellings on the same parcel, right? Um, these are the parcels that we're proposing to have carriage houses on. Um, that variance also um, includes uh, maneuvering for the vehicles that would need to access those carriage houses, whether they're carriage houses or garages, because uh, Reserve A is a private parcel, not a public right of way. So you're maneuvering across the property line, and you need a variance for that. Any questions there? Okay. Um, so the next page, I'm sorry, I kind of skipped ahead. The next page is uh, about the maneuvering. So that's a uh, reserve A and parcel 11 that have that um, maneuvering condition. Um, the next page um, talks about. The maneuvering again, uh, the different garages have different setbacks from um, from that reserve A. Uh, the next page, uh, this is A402B. Yep, so um, still on maneuvering here, uh, or this is for parcels uh, 12, 13, and 14. Uh, you can see where. Uh, parcel 11 is maneuvering onto those three parcels, and so that uh, is still in maneuvering variance. Is everybody kind of still with me? Um, A403, uh, the third variance is the vision clearance at the corner. Um, obviously, as we've discussed in the past, this is not the footprint that you're going to approve, but it's uh, you know, kind of just a thought process and an idea. Um, so we're sh we're showing the variance there. Um, we've, we've kind of shown, um, you know, what uh, the division of traffic usually kind of holds our hands to or holds our feet to, even in uh, these urban neighborhoods. So we're kind of we're keeping that ten by ten division clearance at the corner. Um, Variance four, um, obviously, this is really conforming existing conditions to the lot widths. There's very few lots in the German village that are 50 feet wide. 
uh, item five. Um, again, this is kind of conforming an existing condition where a uh, lot um, in German Village don't meet the area lot requirements. Um, and then there's this funny uh, calculation that is in the zoning code about uh, only the area that is included in three times of the depth of the width of the lot can be included in the area calculation. I see you guys nodding your head, so we're, we're moving on. Um, All right, uh, A4-06, variant six. So this is um, where we're talking about increasing lot coverage. Uh, the blue lots, um, we're increasing from 50% to 60%. Um, and the green lots were proposing uh, up to 75%. And again, what we've discussed is these are the maximums that we're going to uh, assume for these lots. And so we're really setting a guideline. We're not approving footprints or buildings or architecture. Any, any discussion on that? Okay. Um, number seven. Uh, we have the, the four parcels that would front nursery lane, which is not a street. Um, Variants eight uh, building lines. Um, this is very specific to the corner lot um, at Thurman and um, South Forth, where we're you know kind of building in an allowance to be pretty close to the to the sidewalk and have pretty much no setback, but but we're calling it one foot on that side. Uh, again, you guys have full purview over the architecture. If we propose something that uh, is one foot off the property line and you don't like it, you can still um, you know say come back, try again. Um, this is just kind of setting the the, the groundwork for for the start of that. Um, variance nine, we're on uh, A4 of nine, there we go. Um, this is to conform uh, on uh, variance nine B, it's to conform an existing condition um, on parcel four, the existing home, um, and it's existing parcel line have setbacks that are too narrow. And then we're proposing for parcel one, um, again, just a slight um, reduction on the east property line. And then uh, as we already discussed, the, the one foot setback off of the south fourth uh, parcel line. Uh, I think that applies to variance 10 as well. Um, variance 11 on A411. Am I going too fast? Okay. Um, this is just a, a small rear yard reduction uh, from 20 to 25%. Um, and then uh, variance 12 is increasing the amount of area that a garage can exist within the rear yard. Uh, this, the standard is 45. Um, the garages as we have them drawn um, are 48 uh, you know, in the various language. Um, as a matter of trying to avoid fights with the city. Um, I think that's it for the variances that the rest of the uh, remainder of the exhibits are kind of things you've seen previously that try to help explain some of these things if there's a question. So now I'll stop talking.
guys <laughs> pepper me with questions. Four, I would gladly let you let you uh, read from my iPad that motion. <laughs> or I could email it to more. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Questions, comments from the commission. I'm looking at the first one, and I guess I didn't realize this in previous discussions. Is there a single family house in the front of the lot of Vernon, and you're building a garage single family residence in the back? Um, which parcel? One, three, five, and six. Um, yes, we're proposing a carriage house on uh, parcels one, three, five, and six. There are uh, the only parcel that would be that we're proposing a carriage house where there is an existing home is parcel six. The other um, parcels one, three, and five in our would be new homes. That's correct. Yeah, single family residence yeah, right. over the garage. Yeah. Just something we've been fighting. Single, you would sell the, the parcel to a single owner who would own two separate houses. Um, not terribly dissimilar to some of the other applicants that are here tonight. Um, uh, I mean, we don't allow them to have full or bathroom in kitchen. Okay. Um, I mean, there seems to be that there's some carriage houses approved in Germanville. Well, they're called carriage houses, but they don't. They either have a bathroom. But they have like a kitchenette, but they don't have both. Okay. Um, so basically, their function is an extension of the main house. Sure. As opposed to a separate residence. Okay. So I'm trying to figure out are, you, are these going to be actual separate residences that the owner of the entire of the two buildings can lease out or, or rent? Lease <laughs> out just to add it given the size of the homes and add an amenity. Okay, so it's still part of the main house. Yeah, so it, yeah, it's so still it's owned it's by the same it's owner. It's subject to the same restrictions that it's a bathroom, kitchenette, and not both. Okay. So that makes it not a dwelling unit, and we can strike that variance, or at least that portion of the variance. You were anticipating they would be possibly usable by the owner of the main house as a rental unit. No, more so in-laws come in, grandparents, okay. just a, a separate. So they don't need a kitchen in other words. It, it would make it would be more cotton be ideal. Um this is a matter of many for a for sale product. I'd like a kitchen on every floor of my house. And that's a different <laughs> story. <laughs> Again, yeah, that's something else. So that would mix that. Yeah, we can strike that uh, portion of the of the variance. I, variance one still has. Uh, we would still need the the vehicular access across the property line. So we can we can change the language in that. that removes the, the language with um, 33, 32, 037. The other thing would be if, if you did have an extra well unit, parcel three, you're probably in a parking variance as well. You know, showing two parking spaces for parcel three. If there's a dwelling unit, you need one and a half up front, 
one and a half up back. He didn't leave three. Rather, he partials one, five, and six did show three. But if you remove that extra dwelling unit, it eliminates that issue. Yeah, I think we're just going to strike uh, the, that portion of the So that would be needed to be added as a condition. Yeah. The other concerns on the other requested. So, so, so getting the, the recommendation for these zoning variances from us mm -hmm. is a predecessor for you getting the plots identified. Unfortunately, yes, that's weird, but okay. If the plots were identified that we were adding the zoning to the identified plots. But yeah, okay. unfortunately, this the city and the county can't grant us a platted lot that goes against their zoning. Okay. So we need the variances in advance. So, so the ratification, of the recommendation of these zonings, Anthony, would be conditional to these proposed plots. And and you still have the full purview of architecture. of architecture, and you know. And again, like I like I say in the here, in the opening statement, I hate calling it a motion for you guys, but um, you know, there are the footprints we're showing and what we're talking about are maximum. And we're not saying that you know what what we're showing there is an approvable architecture. In our typical cases we have non-conforming lot sizes and we're trying to build upon those lots you're now trying to create lots that would be appropriate in the neighborhood that are not conforming for the very start so looking at this as a development with a couple of houses on that what we're doing is we're sub, we're creating a set of subset zoning for this development that is compatible with what you find in Germany that we make the motion we just reference that language that could be provided to Morgan to include it and add and add the condition about the, the, the kitchen bath the first the, yeah the first variance for uh, two to dwell it works all right who wants to take that it's not, it's not me. <laughs> Can I, you know, I, I understand. <laughs> so let me take a stand at it. So, Mr. Chairman, I move that we adopt the language previously supplied by the applicant at the beginning of his presentation and incorporate it into our motion. Yeah. Um, and that otherwise we, and that in addition, we approve, we recommend the variances as submitted apart from the one regarding the dwelling units, which is 30, 332.037. Yeah. 332.037. And that the, and that none of the subsidiary structures characterized as carriage houses should have a kitchen and a bathroom. I can, yeah, please do. 
that various item one through section 3332.037, striking the yes. reference to two detached single family dwelling units. That's good. Instead, it is a single family dwelling unit garage with a non dwelling unit dwelling. We have the we have a little space. Have a little space. Yeah, that's good. There we go. Do, do you have that? I think we understand what, what it's supposed to say. And if it comes out saying something different, we can correct the scrivener's error to reflect <laughs> the intent of the commission. And I and I will provide that uh, language via email. Thank you. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna we're going to forego reading the language of the variances, but I will say that we have section three 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 two point oh three seven three three one two point two five three three two one point oh five alpha one and bravo two three 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 two point oh five three 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 two point one four three three two point one eight delta 332.19, Language. And I think Anthony, you included 3332.037 when you just recited those. And that's the one we're going to straight reset still requires particular access. I I think that's covered under 331225. Uh, let's just call that variance one without a number. Because <laughs> that uh, 33 32 I think it's specific to the detached uh, multiple dwell. Okay. We'll strike yeah. like what yeah, it's tiring. There we go. All right. <laughs> we have a motion. Is there a second? I will, I will second it. Are there any questions on the motion? Just don't ask me to repeat it. <laughs> Take the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? I said it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you for bearing with us and, and taking the time to work on this. I know it's a pretty complicated little. Yeah. We're excited to show you some design film. Yeah. Well, thanks for all your careful work. You've supplied us with the level of information that we needed. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, commissioners, before we start, since the time is 630, uh, I propose a five minute break. Sounds like a yeah, both looks at the uh, <laughs> we will return at six thirty eight. <laughs> Just a reminder the microphone, the recording is still going, but I'm going to mute the microphone.
All right, so I'm back in order. We are on agenda item number 18. EV-21-12-031-240 East Cossum Street. Applicant for 240 East Cossum. Schmitz. All right, uh, we'll move ahead to item number 19. GV-21-12-032-627 South 3rd Street. Got a stall for my partner. I think he thought there was going to be a project right in front of it. He's still on break. Somebody's going to go look for him. <laughs> Very well, Matt. All right, if you would please raise your right hands. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. Please state your names for the record. I'm Kevin Lee. Matthew Tyson, MKC Architects. Thank you very much. Proposed board description application is listing of a conceptual November hearing. Applicant proposes the addition of 14,000 for the field. To accommodate additional classroom space and a social hall for St. Mary's Parish and School, to accommodate expansion of projects required for the school addition to the rectory and a renovated facade, site renovation to the existing facade and replacement materials in time where possible, site improvements to include a proposed active green space in front of the school on Third Street, including the provision of broke sidewalks, updating fencing, and new landscaping. Proposed new signage will include service not lettering. The new lettering will match typeface and size of lettering on West Facade. Staff announced it's taking the following on approved minutes from November hearing. Commissioner Farrell stated that applicants should preserve original entrance to the school, can be locked or blocked, to not be used. Applicants say that it will appear like a door and be inset, and that they are moving a concrete pad out from to allow the green space, but will leave the trees to give representation of the original entryway. Commissioner Teal stated the guidelines state that no additions are allowed at the front of the Excuse me. At the front, that the commission will have to look at how the addition is attached. After the responded that the addition will be set back. The commissioner asked what will be put into the addition space. After the responded that will be classroom space, adding nine to 12 classrooms. Commissioner Harkey stated that the addition on the front should be light and minimal, such as glass building. Commissioner Thiel stated that the mass of the buildings and rhythm of the neighborhood has been 10 years in the making of Third Street improvements. Commissioner recommends to keep the void of the rectory and school, that it brings significant character to Third Street. Commissioner agrees that the addition of the rectory, though not original, is significant to the structure based off the information given. They state that the applicant has not. Sorry, right here. Sorry. Has not provided why the addition is or isn't significant. Commissioners are lenient on going up or down on the structure of existing, and that there is risk of losing a historical context once the building is completed. Commissioner suggested building in bigger spaces, lower levels, a proposed addition to keep rectory in place. Commissioners are tuned to grow, but need to make sure that they're expecting historic architectural fabric. They recommended looking into different options that do not involve moving the rectory. At the past December business meeting, commissioners wanted to clarify that the intention is not to move the rectory, but only to remove the rear addition. Commissioners are interested in hearing from the applicant if moving the rectory would facilitate saving the rear addition or not. Staff recommends that the commission offers feedback on the design and recommends to continue the application based off of 31.16.12 standards for new construction. 31611 standards of alteration number one, two, three, German Village Guidelines Edition, page 93, number four. Thank you. Floor is yours. I'm Chairman Hartke, Commissioners. 
We have appreciated the two uh, opportunities provided St. Mary to review our conceptual plans. As you have had to observe through the process, we have accepted your feedback and recommendations and have incorporated key design changes into our final design. Tonight, we're excited to bring forward this final design as contained in our COA application for review. Understand we have been extremely thoughtful of the elements of this design and we have changed and equally uh, and we have changed and equally those that remain. The design that we have changed and those equally that remain. Next, I would like to highlight uh, four main points of our application material. First point would be commenting on the application's narrative. The second and third point would be to provide an owner's needs overview of what is contained within the application. And the fourth main point was to close with a new city code provision as a path forward for us. First point, regarding the narrative section of the application, I will not entirely reread or restate what is already in your hands, but I would like to highlight and accentuate some of these points. Education quality. Our current facility is not capable of supporting 21st century educational demand. Lacking our appropriate modern classroom spaces and those dedicated to the arts, science, and intervention requirements. Given the constraints of space on our campus, our team was challenged to put forward only the essential areas which must be included in our elementary school to enable the facility to achieve the goal of providing this 21st century need. Growth. It is the fact that German Village, the South Side, and Central uh, and Columbus's Central Metropolitan areas are recognizing a resurgence of population growth, which translates directly into the growth of the parish, parish and student population. Our facilities are not currently sized to handle this projected growth. We have shared how we've responded to the growth over the last three years by trans transitioning available campus facilities to serve educational uses. However, these additions will not serve the projected long-term population growth. Facility infrastructure weaknesses. Again, I reiterate that the main educational facility was built in 1955 and has never undergone a major renovation. As such, the building no longer conforms to current codes or educational standards. Change is sorely needed within this facility and even the most minor of renovations will trigger mandated compliance changes. Accessibility, safety systems, and capacity can only be addressed with a significant modernization and expansion. Community space. Since 1955, the gymnasium has served as the school's only large gathering space on campus, daily doubling as a cafeteria. Both objectives cannot be met with this gym area. Therefore, we now feed the students in their classrooms to allow the gymnasium to serve full time in the recreational area and support physical educational requirements. Our proposed 250 seat cafeteria slash social hall will address the needs of providing a dedicated space to enable our students to have a proper place to consume their meals. Its regular daily use will serve as this cafeteria for morning and lunch meals, occupying multiple cycles to serve the entire school population, plus providing a gathering space for drop off and pick up and providing space for latchkey after school programs to meet. It will also be available after hours and on weekends for the parish ministries and community to gather for important occasions. Elim eliminating this appropriately, si appropriately sized space does not enable us to accomplish our school mission. Second main point. Within the body of the application, you will see our construction detail and the areas we've worked together to resolve. These include the third street front elementary school facade, the southwest corner addition, frontage green space, and the southeast expansion exterior. Your feedback inspired us to put forward designs befitting of the historical character of the site. Third point, the area we have received the most resistance to incorporating into our design was the relocation of the rectory and the removal of the rectory's rear addition. Within this application, you will see we have removed the plans to relocate the rectory. However, this comes at a significant impact to our campus safety needs. Let me step back and state the, the three key needs that are inherent in our safety and site circulation requirements. And also the manner that we've incorporated changes in our design. The first of these needs was a level and handicapped accessible ADA compliant drop off. This area has been relocated to the west of the existing rectory structure. Second need, central entrance 
central entrance and exit in the main facility, which guides drop off and pick up processes. In our design, an improved entrance will be added to the facility's north face while closing the existing 3rd Street entrance doorway. Third site circulation need. Our original design added a second lane on the existing roadway between the church and rectory to enable vehicle traffic to flow appropriately. This was a catalyst for the rectory's relocation. With our current and proposed design, this aspect has been removed in order to maintain the rectory's original location. However, I must stress that those who will be capable of moving the vehicle traffic in a manner without causing third street backups or neighborhood vehicle interruptions, it requires the parking lot to be reserved for vehicle queuing before and after school and the school to dedicate a high level of staff to manage and monitor vehicle, student, community, pedestrian traffic, and movement during drop off and pickup periods. In short, we stand by the need to retain the rectory location. However, the end result will result in a suboptimal plant design for us, though we commit to making it work. Regretfully, our design requires removal of the rectory's rear addition. Though historic, this addition prevents us from achieving our project's mission. Though we have entertained many alternatives to mitigate this interference, the problem has proved intractable. Following our last review, as the condition at the condition's suggestion, we again evaluated both basement and third floor additions, neither of which proved financially or physically feasible. Therefore, recognizing that the rectory is a principal structure of importance and will be maintained in place, the unfortunate loss of its subordinate addition will not result in visual degradation of the historical district. Tonight, Matt, Matthew will show details of our intentions to rebuild it the rear facade of the rectory in a manner that will restore the building's original historic character. Fourth and final point, we are affirming, we are affirmatively stating that, parentheses, pursuant to the city code section 3116.16, and parentheses, we have found it to be infeasible to financially or physically achieve our charitable purpose while conforming to the pertinent architectural standards and guidelines. By bringing this code section forward, is it is hoped that this provision provides us an additional path forward together. To restate, we have been extremely thoughtful in our design, and this design contains only essential needs, and we have strongly taken into consideration your feedback to advance our design. This design has also taken into account all known options available to achieve our mission, and has taken into account factors of historical significance that are of key importance to all of us. I'd like to close this final point with the restatement of our capstone goal. The mission of our project is to provide the best possible educational opportunities to our diverse student body in a safe, secure, and modern environment. Thank you for the opportunity to present our revised design in order to seek the certificate of appropriateness. This brings me to the close of my introductory comments on our application. I'd like to turn the application over to Matthew at this time. I too uh, will not walk through the presentation as I have done in the two conceptual reviews. I presume you've had enough time to review the material. Um, what I'd like to spend just the next few minutes on is addressing the comments um, from Morgan um, that were resulted from last month's conceptual review as well as the business meeting last week. So St. Mary's School, as Kevin had alluded to, has compromised on numerous aspects of the design to meet the request of the commission um, at increased cost and hardship to the school. The rectory, on the other hand, really is two different things. One of historical importance and the addition, which may be considered a contributing structure. The commission has intimated this largely due to its age, and that is made of masonry. It is our stance that the rectory addition plays little role in the experience of the massing of German village from 3rd Street, detracts from the original intent of the design of the rectory, and is incongruent with the architecture of its time. Our proposal restores the rectory to its original intent without affecting the Third Street experience, nor German Village as a whole. Over the course of our concept meetings, it was evident that the open space in front of the rectory is crucial to the experience of Third Street. In fact, the Third Street study was referenced in which the open space in front of the rectory was given significant importance. The rear of the rectory was not mentioned in the subsequent study and has not, neither historically nor today, been part of the urban fabric of German Village. An alternative scheme of relocating the rectory while maintaining the addition was also looked at. This scheme, however, 
would require the rectory to be moved in line with the front of the Berkeley Center and the church, with little setback and virtually no open space in front. While possible, the cost benefit of such a move, plus the elimination of any open area in front of the building, distorts the void mass sequencing of Third Street as referenced in previous meetings. This aspect was a key comment by the Commission during the concept review phase. As such, we have taken this feedback into consideration and amended design accordingly, as you've seen. We submitted a scheme that retains the original location, shape, and size of the rectory before its addition. The proposed plan no longer requires the relocation of the rectory and retains the open yard in front of the building. This is not without additional sacrifice and costs incurred on behalf of St. Mary's School. Now a dedicated drop-off lane can no longer be required, provided, as Kevin alluded to. Additional staff will be required in person to maintain order and safety during drop-off, and the parking lot and the back lot will be of increased importance for the flow and circulation of vehicles. Furthermore, while a portion of the rectory addition is masonry, a large percentage of the addition is actually wood framed with siding. As such, our proposal restores the masonry architecture to its fullest extent. Our proposal also uncovers the building to its original architectural heritage, most explicitly noticeable in a typical American four square. Our proposal does not claim that the rectory addition is not historically significant, nor contributing. We agree with that. But rather, it is not historically important. The addition has never been an important part of German Village as a whole or of the streetscape of Third Street. We've exhaustively looked at alternatives from the cafeteria in the middle of a parking lot, which does not work, to reducing its footprint, which does not work. Our proposal isn't about the need for physical expansion versus historical preservation. Our proposal is congruent with both of these responsibilities of the Commission. Thanks, Matt. To the Commission, we've, you've heard uh, my owner's commentary in reference to aspects of the application. Second, you've heard from Matthew highlighting improvements to our design and a new path forward to mutually resolve the rectory area of concern. Matthew also answered the follow up brought forward by the Commission at last um, week's business meeting. With that, we close our commentary on the application. Thanks for the opportunity to present our revised design in order to seek a certificate of appropriateness. And tonight, we'd be happy to further dialogue any area of interest to help us towards that approval goal. Thank you. Thank you. Questions, comments from the commission? So we received earlier a letter from uh, former Commissioner Panzer that referenced uh, section 3116.16 of the city ordinance. Um, so I'm curious about how that language might apply because I would, if I'm going to vote in favor of this, I really would like to hang my hat on something in the guidelines for the city, city code. I don't think I can do it any other way. So I want to ask you about that language. Um, so Commissioner Panzer's letter left out items one, two, and three in section 31.16.16. And so I'm wondering whether the last sentence at the end is something that trumps those first three items or is a fourth that unnumbered fourth factor that's to be taken into account together with the first three. Towards that end, Jay has been advising us and helping us understand and interpret the code. Um, may we ask Jay to be sworn in and, and help this dialogue forward? Yes, I, it, I'm, that's fine with me. I'm not sure he's going to be a fact witness, more of a lawyer, but. Well, I think to answer your question, we're trying to explore that code verbiage, right? So probably the best authority that we know of in the room. Because I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the word, at the word additionally, okay. and I think I know what that means. Yeah, Mr. Panzer, Mr. Panzer was come forward, you come forward and make it clear. Sure. Good to see you.
Thank you. Please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and the whole truth. I do. And please state your name for the record. James Panzer. Thank you. Uh, if I may, uh, to, to specifically address what Mr. Ferriel uh, referred to, uh, it's interesting. I had not looked at it in the way you just presented it. it. The first three items were not omitted to hide them or to, to uh, move them from consideration. But in fact, the way this is written, that last sentence is really presenting a fourth issue. That's the way it looks to me. And that's that's the way I read it, and that's why the, uh, why the letter was written the way it was. Mm -hmm. And um, to amplify that, I would say that when we have in the past, sorry, we, you, uh, when the commission in the past has looked at these issues, it has looked at those first three issues singularly and not uh, this and that and that. So I would say that, uh, Commissioner Ferriero, you're exactly right. It's, it, it is, in effect, a fourth that I had never come across. And uh, my knowledge, there only are two nonprofit uh, property owners in German Village, uh, St. Mary's and the Society. And it's just never, this has just never come up before. Well, that's the second thing I want to explore. Who is the owner of the rectory? For the rectory, Diocese of Columbus. Okay, so the owner of the building whose charitable purpose we need to be taking into account here is not St. Mary's School, not St. Mary's Church, but the Diocese of Columbus. Is that, do I understand I, that right? I think as you look at um, parish structure, the parish as a whole, all the facilities on the parish um, are integral to the parish, the parishes report and are an entity of the entire diocese. So the diocese owns a bunch of buildings. Owns a bunch of parishes and a bunch of buildings. Right. Prop, as, right. as the applicant uh, name. So I think this factor requires us to take into consideration whether the diocese in, of Columbus finds it infeasible to financially or physically achieve the diocese charitable purposes. Uh, while conforming to the architectural standards. So what are the diocese charitable purposes? My first answer would be um, subordinate to the diocese in St. Mary. Within St. Mary are many ministries, one of which is education. Educational facility is the facility in question that the rectory's change will support. So directly, the educational requirements, goals, and objectives, and the mission of the education are inherently consistent with that answer. And I understand that the school's charitable purposes are. I understand the school's purposes. I take this to tell us we're to consider the applicant's charitable purposes, and I haven't having trouble divorcing St. Mary's from the Diocese of Columbus, which is the nonprofit entity that and guess, owns and operates sure. and the I, facilities. And I, understand. and I think they're one and the same, as, I, as, as I'm saying about education. It, it's not a separate entity, St. Mary's Education. St. Right. Mary, it's not a separate entity. Yes, and it's in St. Mary Educational Goals and Objectives are a key ministry, parish school, a key ministry of St. Mary subordinate to the diocese. So I, I think that's the, the key point. That so we arrive back to. So maybe. Is it infeasible to financially and physically achieve those purposes? Consistent with the architectural requirement. Excuse me. It doesn't say financially and physically. It says financially or, or physically. Very different things. Yep. And what we presented what I believe is being presented in an academic is that it is physically infeasible, that it has been looked at in. The school can't operate without removing the addition? The, the, the school certainly operates today. The school is operation. Stepping back to the needs that we presented in these you know, concept reviews and tonight, 
all those factors to consider 21st century needs, requirements that are being met, facilities, uh, fallacies today, um, the growth inherent that we're experiencing, all of those factors combined are rendering this facility inadequate. And all of the um, parts of that facility we've put forward in our application, we've shown, including the cafeteria social hall, are integral to satisfying the educational goals of St. Mary's School, St. Mary's as a whole, subordinate, St. Mary's School subordinate to St. Mary. So that's why we are concluding, no, we can't accomplish our mission due to size physical constraints. Matt had said, we, and we've showed you in our concepts, we've looked at all of the entire campus, and this is where we've arrived back is the main point of conflict, is the removal here. We have no other options that we've been able to determine. Yeah, so I've got to think about this. I, I don't think when the city council adopted this language, it was contemplating a charity the size and scale of the Diocese of Columbus, which has purposes, charitable purposes that transcend anything that happens at St. Mary's on a daily basis. And that is still a part of what goes on at St. Mary's on a daily basis. So I'm Trying to think uh, about this. To the chair, I'm being swear in. Other yes, raise your hand. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, the truth. You got that right. Yes, sir. All right. Please state your name for the record. Okay. My name is Father Vince Wynn, and I'm a diocesan priest. I represent the Diocese of Columbus and also St. Mary's. Um, right now, with the Diocese of Columbus, we have 105 parishes in 23 counties um, uh, with only 75 priests. Uh, right now we have 53 schools and right now we're going through a strategic plan process right now of what is really uh, feasible for the for, for the diocese right now um, we are in dire straits uh, in, in regards to the number of parishioners we have about 300,000 catholics throughout those 23 counties and the difficulty with that is that we're both city and rural so we are going through a very very rough process uh, and it doesn't help that our leader, uh, Bishop Brennan, has been moved to Brooklyn. Um, we are continuing that process right now. Um, but the well, reason why St. Mary's is not for success, no doubt. We're not going there. Uh, so so the, the, the reason why St. Mary's is very important is because it is the first school um, that is under the diocese. And so with the, with the parish and the school, it's now separate. It's financially now uh, uh, funded by the Diocese of Columbus. And so having said that, there's a lot of value with that because it is the first school um, that is representing that the, that the diocese is really running. Um, uh, and that shows you the, the brevity of this because now it's serving more than just German Village, it's serving over 30 different zip codes. The difficulty now is that we have so many different buildings now, we're asking what is really feasible for that. And for us here at St. Mary's School, this is the, it's really important to get this right. Um, and as you know, uh, with, with any nonprofit, money is not easily accessible. And so for ourselves, we have very, very good benefactors who see the value of this school and understand that this is serving more than just um, our parishioners, but the, but the but greater central Ohio. And this is the best possible way we can, we can we can try as hard as we can to serve our children, to serve our, our students. What extent, if you can answer this question, you may not be privy to the financials, to what extent is the parish financially dependent on the financial success of the school? It, right now, it's independent. So usually, what happened in the past was that if the school was broke, the parish would pay would pay the the, the result uh, the, the, the the difference. Yeah, but that's all now different. now it's all changed. the The thing is, is that it's a both and. That's the beauty big beauty of our faith. Um, and the thing is, is that for the success of the school, it still is dependent with the the success of the church. Why? Because we both need our each other because we both have the same name, St. Mary's. And again, for ourselves as the church, we need the young people to come 
That's why the whole church now is, is, is based on one word, which is evangelization, to help the kids uh, in regards to knowing, loving, and serving God, and especially in encountering Jesus, Jesus Christ. Um, the big word right now that Pope Francis is using in the United States is, is the word encounter. How do we create that moment of encounter for that person so that they can come in and really experience what the love of God is about? Um, and so it starts with the youth. Um, for me, even though we're separate, you've got your sweet petunia. I'm in that, church, I'm in that school building all the time, 24 seven, to make sure the kids see me as a representation of, of, of Christ. Um, and it's, it's, it's really important because they are the future of the church. Okay, well, I'm still troubled by the four factors, and you got one. But I think I've, I think I've got the information I need. Thank you, Commissioner Phil. Excusing myself. Thank you. Any other questions? Regarding the infill of the southwest corner of the city school, um, originally you said it was going to be a classroom, but today's letter says it's now a relocated stair. I guess on the floor plan, it now looks like it's a stair. That's correct. Um, in fact, I think that was a um, comment that was made at the last concept for review is we were asked what was back there. We said a classroom um, as part of the discussion about, gosh, it'd be great if it was glass and, and, and different. Um, and then somebody had mentioned um, that a stair, a stair would, would make sense there um, to differentiate it furthermore from, from also architecture, but program as well. So we 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 worked the design to um, allow for that. Right now, it's shown as flush with both the west and south walls. In fact, uh, the site plan looks like the roof is also continuous. So is it at all possible? I don't know if you have the right width length. Just inset those two walls a little bit. Um, and then have a slightly different roof so that it just like a little, slightly lower roof so that it just reads as a box. Uh, yes, that is the intent. Um, the, the site plan that we're referring to that shows a continuous roof is, is kind of an artistic rendering of it. Um, it, it on the elevation, we showed the concept review, which I am um, not sure if the text still fits in here. It can't cycle down to the elevation of it, but I think there is text that says it's going to be. Um, offset from the edge of the building, eight inches. It's going to be lowered by twelve inches from the existing facade, and it's going to be recessed at, at eight, at eighteen inches, or whatever that text is. Yeah, it's right, right there. Yeah, if you scroll down to the um, the bottom text there, we have some verb verbiage about that. Yeah, will be yeah, southwest addition will be recessed twelve inches from existing facade and separated from existing wall with an eight-inch reveal. So. It's recessed, it's lower, and it's going to be um, there's, a, there's a word reveal on it. It hasn't made it into the floor plan yet. It hasn't made it in, cor correct. It has not made it into the floor plan, um, but it is indicated, I think, in the elevation. And that is the intent. Question that we've discussed before. Uh, I did take a peek at the, uh, the, the platting. Uh, looks like there's two separate parcels currently. They're going to need to be assuming some parcel changes for this addition. That is correct. Uh, we met with the city of Columbus uh, last Wednesday. They agreed because of stormwater detention, um, water service, and so on that those um, plots would need to be combined. They indicated the process is simple, um, it's just a matter of going through that. And we intend to do that. In terms of the elevation proposed here, um, it looks like what's being proposed is the original openings of that original original masonry wall still there. Looks like two may have been turned into doors to access back in. The dormers up there, the two of those exist, and you're adding a third to match and that's happened. To Correct. It is our understanding there was a third dorm there originally. It had to be removed to fit the addition roof on where it where the hip sort of meets it. Um, therefore, we're going to put a third one there. Unless we're instructed by the commission not to. 
I did see it in Patrick's letter, um, had to report documentation prior to a demolition of the, the yeah. tribute and the historic edition. So my two cents in. Oh, your two cents in. So I disagree with everything you said about the addition, whether it's in the back of the building and being insignificant, yada, yada, yada. I can't vote for anything that's going to give you permission to tear that down from this initial whatever application to the commission. However, I understand that if it is necessary for you to tear that down to achieve your mission, this, I believe, gives you permission to do that. But it might actually trump the first three criteria. And that's how I look at it. That's how I look because at it. Because it doesn't make any sense otherwise. Right. I, and I agree with that. But I think they need to make the case that it is a hardship to your mission to not be able to tear that down. You need to prove that financially or physically or both. And, and my recommendation to this is that either you pull the demolition piece out of this application when we go to vote on it or keep it in. I would vote against it, causing you to go and apply in an appeal to this commission as a hardship. That way I can fulfill my responsibility to the commission and historic preservation, et cetera, by saying we voted to keep it, but you had to prove financially and physically or both that it was a hardship and that trumps what our initial vote was. That's where I'm at. I think to that point, hit me on the head. I, I think the case is there. Question becomes procedure. On our end. Procedure and method, exactly. Okay. I think keeping the, the rectory where it's at, I think, is the preferred option of any option presented before us. I think the, the additional item number four provides the path. For me, it's, it's identifying if do the hardship here on the first time go, or if it's a procedural thing and it needs to be the vote and come back. I know Mr. Panther had in his letter a note about that. Not sure I'm on the same page of where his head was on whether we can do it up front. I think it needs to be an appeal. I think you have a strong case for that. And I should have read assess my comments on thanking you for reaching, keeping the front of St. Mary's Church and keeping the rectory where it's at and respecting that study 10 years ago of how important all that open space is in front of the church. Um, I think we have to follow procedure. I don't think we can avoid it on the first shot. I think we need, my opinion is we need to deny the, it and they need to come back and prove that it's a hardship to their mission to not allow that to be torn down. Um, and this is the difference with a nonprofit. Nonprofit has the option for a mission for a, a single resident coming in and saying, I want a 40 by 40 foot living room in a 15 foot bedroom house. Um, and that's my mission as a compass for not for a profit from a, that point of view. So that's where I'm making the, the difference is where the mission piece comes in. See. Well, now, just, I want to add to something because I think I disagree with both of you about the hardship effect. So. This, these criteria for unusual and compelling circumstances are clearly separated from a hardship language. So they're in separate, they're in separate sections. Okay. The economic hardship languages in 31.16.15 and the unusual and compelling circumstances languages in a completely okay. different standard. Okay, a completely have, different section of the ordinance. So you're saying that, that the point sixteen could be part of I believe so. I'm I'm thoroughly comfortable with that aspect of it. I'm trying to pull up fourteen demolition right now, but yeah, it's, I, I, it's not coming up for me. Yeah, here. Yeah, fourteen. Uh yeah, I think so. Yeah. Try to get there. Here we go.
to me, you still have to prove financially and physically that it's impossible not to achieve their mission without the demolition of that. That has not been proven. Not impossible, infeasible. Yeah. Right. Right. Just different. Right. I agree. But that hasn't been proven yet. When we talked about adding a floor and said, well, let's get the footprint down. Yeah. And, and I haven't seen definitive where that doesn't work because you can't fund it or whatever. I guess when I talk about the physical, that, that's our contention, physical aspect of the fit. Um, our conceptual reviews, this review, we showed you all of the alternatives that we visited for our design. We started with the elements of the design that are essential to the design, the needs that drove that. Followed with all of the alternative locations to, to fit this design, stating that there, the design is necessary. There's no wants in here, it's needs that are in here. Mm -hmm. Showed you north, south, east, and west, all of the available locations to cite this. So physically, and then followed up with you, or followed up on the uh, Ask to look at below the surface levels, subsurface levels, third floor levels. So I think we have made the case. I, I don't know what's left to not make the case that physically we've looked at all available alternatives for this design and have found none. My other, point is, other than my this point is you haven't shown those to us and why they're not viable. I think we have. I, I would challenge you, we have shown them. We showed you the alternative locations in the conceptual review. We showed you the east, south, west, north. Um, we talked about the infeasibility and cost and function of subsurface and third floor. And, but that's your statement. You haven't proven to me substantially that it's infeasible either physically, spatially, or economically. So that you, you've stated that it's not, you can't sure. afford it. Sure. But I, I need more evidence to support that, that you can't afford it or that it can't spatially be done. Something I need more information for me to let the back end of the rectory to come down. Yeah, and I understand it. And this is kind of the difficulty we're in, right? So, um, how do we show all the possibilities when possibilities are endless? Kind of thing. Like, you know, at what point yeah, is enough sure. enough? Like, how how many do I have to show? Do I have to show you ten options? Do I have to physically draw plans for all of these? So um, that that's the, you know the kind of argument. Show them kind of four major moves, um, which. Which we kind of went through in the last push ups review, and we were directed that, um, yes, you're right. Generally speaking, those don't work. The option we'd like you to look at is to shrink the footprint of the of the of the cafeteria so it fits in that little space, so we don't have to remove the addition. Um, which it, it, it already goes against the necessity of of the program um, because the school needs a space. For 250 students, that's half the population. Their curriculum and programmatic reasons that number exists. And if we, the footprint that's allocated the buildable area based on the commission, it can't physically fit 250 people in, in that space. I, I think that's what gets me there is, is understanding the spatial requirements for that. So you know, your floor plan for 250 people. A floor plate, 250 feet. Correct. Right. And it's the only other way to do it is basically to gut the entire current building, which goes into the financial Not side of things. Infeasible. So to me, I, I think that thing right there is what gets me to the we infeasibility. Just, we don't have a drawing saying standing or people at tables and cafeteria tables. Well, yeah, by codes are, are required to have uh, seats and tables and that. So we're looking at 15 square foot meters. Square feet, so. Correct. And then and we have to have, to, so right now we, we talk about physical needs uh, for, this, for the building. One thing we're talking about is physical needs for the scheme that we're providing, in other words, space on site for us to put all the additional stuff. But the existing conditions is the other physical needs. So right now, the stage, the stage in the gymnasium is the kitchen right so that so now students have nowhere to perform and, and, and then so we're, we're gonna have to provide a kitchen as well to really have it the, we're going to renovate school we need a kitchen as well so it's not just the 250 social hall or cafeteria it's the kitchen that gets allocated with that the restrooms that are required by code 
and all these things are required. And it's just what they cannot, it physically cannot happen. The thing that's a little bit more difficult is without having a better site plan that shows this addition, you know, saving the rectory in the addition, is that um, it appears to me that the one option that you didn't look at was um, expanding this kind of at an angle that allowed you to maintain a way to drive around addition. But what happens as a result of that is you lose parking. And, and crossing into does that? I think you're referring to moving it toward east. Moving uh, it towards east, yeah. yeah you east. can you could come in and lose parking spaces and make the the Lazelle turn yeah. and go to the east around in addition to the building, and you lose parking. You lose parking. Right. We we um in one of our concept reviews we showed we showed that that all the area to the east a design would interfere with. The traffic, uh, the, the site circulation. Um, well, that was list. that blocked off Lazell Street. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you'd have to, you know, kind of step it over in order to allow a car to circulate there. Which seems, which seems to me that it would be a possibility. And then when I think of that, without actually having seen that as an option, I come back to then I'm approving taking down an existing uh, contributing structure because you need parking. Well, it's not only that, but also the flow of traffic. When it when it when it comes through from Third Street, you know, it's, there's it's stoppage on Third Street because of people coming in, and so we organize a way. But we moved all the cars from the faculty over to the old hobby shop. And so now we use all that parking to get everybody in that lot so that when we uh, get everybody uh, to leave, they're already there. So there's no more stoppage on Third Street anymore, which is why we need that space of parking. Um, adding that building out east just does not work, and it'll block more of the traffic that's on Third Street, which will result in more people calling the cops. Which was on us having a citation. So it happens all the time. And I guess I want the floor plan to show that since 250 people is 15 square feet, 3750 square feet. But as far as I can tell, your social hall of commons is at 4,000 something. It's too small, but it seems larger than what you're saying code requires. So I guess I need to have all that. Logical step. It needs to be the side and be code, and code says this, the Y is bigger. Right. That's a great question. And and you know, we can get um, more accurate measurements with that. I think the narrative is, is sort of a loose number on that. There again, it has to do with the, the other spaces that are in there as well. So um, while I can have 15 feet for code, I can't have a so I've got to have a surgery, right? I've got a kitchen. Um, and I gotta have Room for students to queue um, to get their food. I've got to have somewhere with trash receptacles where students can put their trays and all of that. So code is is as you guys know minimum, right? It's the minimum required. That's how many students I can fit in there, and that and has to do with just egress and occupancy and that kind of thing. But but really, there's more stuff to make it work, which is why there's that's like a ten percent increase. Hey, what you're looking for, I get. Paraphrase would be floor plan, block colored, use case, space required, space provided, kitchen, space required, space provided, to show how all those parking pieces come together. I think that's what some of the purpose will understand. The logic that the space in front of the double doors coming in, that's where the server is. So only the large two story space is where that seating area is. That's where the 3750 has to be. Right. Has to be blocked out saying this is like server time service area and then customers seating. Correct. Right now it's just showing that the whole space is what else needs to lot. So Charissa, I think we're kind of looking for a data sheet and program. Right. Basically proof of why it's a physical hardship. X number of students and X number of square feet plus a 10% increase for serving line plus your wall. 
factor because we need that net gross versus gross. Got a couple architects up there that are talking to another architect. Right. But that I, I need that kind of data to, to get this. I get there. I think you're going to have it. But I just I need that to help. I, I think I do. So I don't think you have the votes tonight to nail it down. I think there's a path to get there from what you've heard. Would you like to continue the application private information? Okay, I understand. I, I guess I'm a little bit confused with as we've gone through the concept reviews, demonstrating locations, demonstrating alternatives. Um, you know, some of this feedback didn't come here. That we didn't hear this. Otherwise, it would have been very easy to provide all this feedback and have it available to you right now or, or in advance. I think so the we letter changed the complexion okay. of all of this discussion. And we're using that letter to get you where you need to go okay. and still satisfy our responsibility to the historic district and the commission. Okay. I think we're right on the edge. It's just you need to get at least two more past that edge. Yeah, then you'll have three out of this five. I think you'll probably pick up one or two more with that. Can I get a clarification on? Can we answer your question, Commissioner, on the location? Because I'm a little confused, and we could go back and further answer that if we didn't fully answer you on your your thought of an alternative. Well, it looked like the options that you explored. Um, you you know you you gave us possible expansion locations. Yeah. So option C brought the addition straight to the back building and that um, which was east and that obstructed Lizell Street yeah. cut it off and the flow of traffic um, correct departing um, the uh, alleyway as well as the, I guess but did you explore any other and one of the things that you know I realize you can have a large hall area and you could have the servery offset and you could, you know, the stage obviously wants to be in line with the assembly area, but if you could work some of those other functions like kitchen, servery, those types of things to allow that addition to push then to the north and east, it seems to me you could still get traffic circulation around it. And I just, it wasn't something that was presented or there wasn't, I mean, with the site plan that we have right now, it's kind of difficult to tell if that's an option or not. Okay. Now, I, I realize that that's going to reduce the amount of parking that you have there. I guess but. the other answer to that, if you observe the site circulation process during school drop off and pick up, um, what you see is the needful for that direct vehicle traffic to come up that rectory roadway and to depart either one of those two ways. That's why we put a line, a north south line on the east of that structure so that we didn't provide an interference in traffic flow that would be a, a large confusion. Obviously, it takes parking, but it would be a, an impairment to the vehicle flow. And that's why we made it a line so that you would have straight and true vehicle flow, um, which is paramount to a safe pickup and drop off process. That, that's why we stopped there. We did explore. One option, which was an entire facility um, in the parking lot that allowed you to have that path, skips over that, allows there to be a roadway, puts a freestanding facility in that parking lot. But there was a case of extraordinary cost, practicality of a separate space, and loss of parking. And students across the track. And students across the track. Yeah, yeah but they, we they, can they add some of those processes. Yeah. Would be most important. Right. Yeah. Unless you could totally eliminate the yeah. there. So I hope that answers your questions on the alternatives that we looked well, at to that end. I guess I'm not I'm not sold that that traffic has to come in and make a direct right out to Lozelle that it couldn't go or circulate around a building. Yeah, I, that is fantastic. You're right. Is it is it impossible? Absolutely not. I mean, not it's, it's, it's is it infeasible? Um, likely, I, I think it's a lot to ask for vehicles and students and everybody who's kind of crossing this abyss of a parking lot out there navigating between campus. 
to have vehicles understand without direct line of sight where to go. That I need to drive around this building and then turn left on this. It's all about safety. Just feel it's yes, line of sight. It's it's. it's it, I think it's infeasible. I think it's a. I think it's. I'm glad you're proposing that that as an option. Um, I also think it looks like a lot of space. But if you watch the vehicular traffic and student flows during that time, you would consider it a small space um, and a, a, ca a call for caution for that inner that uh, site circulation of students, staff, and, and vehicles. I'll have to say I have learned not to drive by that area <laughs> between <laughs> 255 and 345. So for the, the sake of time, so some more to get through. Is there anything else that you need from us now? Questions from, from uh, for us? Just do you, do you like Ned suggested just to split the demolition portion separate and just vote on that separately so they could just I don't think you can. You yeah. need yeah. the data for all the floor plates to solve well, them. I think you got to do it all as one. So we wait another month and get all the data in the next application, and we can say that yeah, this supports what they're saying. These are the square footage of the program, the percentages, yada yada yada, and all the other points you guys made as data points. This not being a hardship, this being the other option. Yeah. These are the yeah. I don't think we need to know. I think we just need to have the information. Yeah. It still gets to the same one. I think the, the big problem I had, I think you've largely solved. My biggest concern has been the precedent setting action of tearing down a, a 19th century addition to, to the building. Um, the, the charitable purpose language, which I had not noticed until Mr. Panzer's letter drew it to drew my attention to it. I think avoids some of that, although it does occur to me in the back of my mind, though I can probably have a charity established by the end of the day tomorrow and my property transferred to that to charity. With a mission that would be completely incompatible with the uh, with the architecture, so I'm a little nervous about that. But I don't think that's going to happen very often. Maybe Bible would you see? Well, yeah. Well, I doesn't say that. Um, there are lots of actually, actually not Bible yeah, one Yeah, but actually, you go and look at the definition because I I did. I think that's a conversation for another time. Another time. <laughs> but I I didn't. Some research last night looking it up and it's five one three C as well. So all that said, I think your best course of action is a continuance. And I think we could probably wrap this up. We, we agree. Yep. Thank you for giving us an hour. Thank yeah. you for helping us. <laughs> Thanks. So was this conceptual? This no. was not the anyway, no. right, So we need to we need to continue yeah. it. Yes. Yeah. So uh an yeah. item let me do it. On item GV 2112-032-672 South Third Street, I move to continue. Second. Quick motion. Favor? Aye. Aye. I say the motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Moving ahead to item 20, GV-21-12-033, 323 East Deck Street. Raise your right hand. Go ahead, tell the truth, the whole truth, and the truth. I do. Please state your name for the record. Uh, Michael Moran. Sir? Sure. Those were prescription, retain new light fixtures in the west elevation. Prior lights were broken and unrepairable. No changes made to the existing outlet or wire. Applicants spoke with city code enforcement official that related no permit was required when reusing existing outlets. New fixtures chosen based on others present in Jersey Village with example photos included. Staff analysis applications in response to code violations. The fixtures are more contemporarily in style and style era of the building. Fixtures are central design. 
on a building that historically would not have had exterior light fixtures attached. Applicant was continued but was removed from the November agenda after three consecutive absences. Applicant is requested to be placed on the December agenda for review under new application number. Staff recommends approval of any clarifications to be submitted to HPS staff for review and approval prior to issuance of a certificate based off the CC 311611 standard of alteration number nine and number 12. Hey, anything else ahead? Um, I think there was some uh, misunderstanding and miscommunication in the back previously in that the uh, the door these lights are in was referred to as the front door. Uh, my front door is on X Street. This is looking at it. You can be standing on Grant if you're looking at it from there. Um, this is much. This would be considered a, a middle door or a side door. It is. It's not my front door. So, which was part of the issue with the side of lights, which they said aren't appropriate for a front door because they're not formal enough. Um, this specific picture I get for two reasons. Uh, well, more than two, but two main reasons would be. I want a light that shines down um, and not out into the, into the windows of my neighbor's uh, properties, which look directly into my yard. And also I picked it because it is the exact fixture that is on the back of my neighbor's house, um, you know, less than 75 feet away from where this picture was taken. So any additional questions or clarifications? Questions, comments from the commission? The last, the first one was my first. So I'd be interested in hearing from the architects about the, so whether you use it as a main entrance to your house and whether it's architecturally a front door or two kind of separate things. Well, so, if you keep going through pictures, there are pictures of my front door. The front, front door of this house is, okay. The original front of the cottage. It's got a lamp post out front of it. It's to be a breeze as the front door. I didn't like use it as a front door. That's what I'm going to Okay, I'm just uh, I'm asking the architect. Okay. And the builders. Those are some different conclusions. I, I think in this case it's just landscaping is all side yard because it's plural. Yeah. Okay. So your front door really is on deck as your address. Yes. I don't know who receives emails, but I did send some additional photos in case you didn't have one. So, if you're familiar with the area, if you're driving south on Grand, you run into that where you have to turn right and then turn left on the Grand. That's my house. So you, my front door is what you're looking at when you're driving south from Grant and going back. Okay. So that's three three five is my neighbor's house. The one close there, and front door is that's my. Okay. Okay. So. Can you clarify for me the information that you received that said, um, which was Ralph Butcher that said no permit is required for the replacement of these two fixtures? I thought that's what I checked with about light fixtures, electrical stuff. So I called the city and that's been something in touch with. And that's said, what you were told. Yeah, and he said if you're not moving the fixture or changing, you know, your electrical connections and existing fixtures, you don't get burned. So, so I would say if these were new and there have been no fixture there, we certainly would not be approving this. Yeah. But since there's boxes there and you're just replacing the light fixture, mm -hmm. I am going to disagree with you that these light fixtures would never shine on your neighbor's property across the street, either direction. But that's up okay. to No, I mean, it's not like a spotlighting to it, but I know. I know. It's also the look I wanted, I intentionally want the lights yeah. to go down. Just, I'm, yeah, I'm just saying because the boxes were there already. I, I feel like if you were given direction, City, they didn't mention that you needed to get um, any kind of commission approval. That they feel like you could and need to say it's okay. Red City. Well, I mean, building permits and stuff are not all, only kickoff gates for coming to the commission. There's other stuff. 
that doesn't require a permit that you still need to go to the commission to get a yeah. permit for. And, and I wasn't trying to screw it. No, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not accusing you. something that's significant. Yes. Yeah. But I, I just don't want the notion out there that if I don't need a permit for it, I don't need to come to the commission. That's yeah, and that's uh, not. John, you guys have a staff approved several other things yeah. like that. Yeah. I'm sure you've seen him working on this house for years. Now. Yeah, so, so I think we've got one, two, yeah. at least three. Yeah. There are and, this is, and this is why we're always careful to call it a certificate of appropriate that's not a permit. Sure. Yeah. Is there a motion? On item GV 21-12033333 East Beck Street, I move to approve us in the second. Questions on the motion? In favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Seven yeah, motion passes. Thank you. All right, moving ahead to item 21, GV 21 12 134181 East Beck Street. Please raise your right hand. Where I tell the truth, the whole truth, and the truth. Yes. Please state your name for the record. James Jamie Wilder. All right. Proposal description applicant is requesting to change the previously approved specifications of the skylights. They would like to change the skylight configuration from three sets of four skylights to three sets of two skylights. Skylights are previously approved back in 1996. Footprint or size and location of skylight sets would not change. Skylights will still be the same manufacturer and height of the curve will not improve. Applicant is requesting to change the skylight middle color to first red. Application was approved at the May 4th, 2021 hearing at the past December June. Past December during village business meeting, commissioners request a color sample of brick red sent to the staff. Commissioners also request a sketch of the new proposed skylight configuration, which applicant has provided, which I'll distribute in a second. Um, this is based off of CC 31611, standards for alteration number 12. I think page four of the application shows the sketch. Is that actually the incorrect? Yeah, sure. it, was yeah, a, so. it was an early draft. <laughs> the problem that we ran into was that uh, there are three banks of skylights, and the way that they were put together before they had linking with the junction of all four of each bank took place. And looking at it in order to not have a leak there. Basically, some roofer is going to have to guarantee it because <laughs> there's no manufacturer that would. And one way to do that to get a manufacturer guarantee would be to raise the curve for the second channel, and we'd like to not do that. Okay. What's proposed here is basically so the single long skylight. And have a couple of those as opposed to having a configuration of upper and lower. Yes, and if you look at the um, photo, which does a better job perhaps than the drawing of showing that there's actually three banks of skylights on the original, and those locations don't change because of the interior trim work, we're just fitting to the hole. So there's no motivation on our part to change the, the footprint. But if we can simplify the details so that we don't have that leaking issue, and uh, you know, in looking at the drawings, we kind of like the the long vertical. Some of the larger tin roofs may have been standing seam as opposed to flat lock. I've seen them both ways in the village and out. But it would retain some of the vertical that it had in the previous rendition, none of which was you know historically original. Improved. Some of the lines would still stay with the current with the currently proposed change. So to clarify on the spacing, are all like one, two, three, four, six of these proposed skylights going to be equally spaced, or are you going to have two grouped together, a wider space, two together, a wider space, two together? Uh, the second, two together, the wider space, two together. It, and it's because of the interior space that we're fitting into. Okay. All of it. All right, on the proposal. If there's none, is there a motion? Application 
GB-21-05-231-181 East Beck Street to approve the application as submitted. Second. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? All right. Aye. Against? Let's have it. Motion passes. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, uh, moving on to conceptual applications, item 22 GB-21-12-035, 148 Thurman Avenue. We have with me Governor Sam, Sam for term. The record show Mr. Robert is still on the record. And if you can circle raise your hand, you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and the truth. Can you state your name for the record? Sandy Sherman, Sam for term. Sir. Proposed right. description remove asphalt shingles in the shed porch roof located at the rear of the building. Roof deck was damaged by a large tree branch falling. Owner has repaired the decking and felt the felt the repair. Homeowner is proposing to install a TPO roof with a tinder's red color. Best replicate a flat loft tin roof or rolled seam. Materials previously approved in the temp case for 181 Inspect Street, COA number GB 2105031. Applicant is asking that this material be approved as an additional part of the test case. The past December business meeting, Commissioner required the reasoning as to why the applicant wishes to add this material onto the shed roof specifically. Original roof had asphalt shingles installed. Traffic Commission has noted that the test case for 181 East Beck Street has not been installed long enough to propose another property to use this product. Commission should offer design feedback that can, use, that can be utilized by the applicant to further refine the proposal for review at future GBC meetings. No action is required. Anything else to add? Um, yes, I would like to, uh, you know, we concept only. I'm not sure what our status is here. It's conceptual on the agenda. Okay. Um, and I understand that, you know, this test, the original test case has not been very historic at this point. I'm interested from my knowledge of roofing and what I would like to do for the customers in the preservation of. Uh, Flat lock tin look or the appearance of tin roof, whether it's uh, standing seam or flat lock. TPO can replicate flat lock. And before World War II, to my knowledge, there was no asphalt roofing material available for the ditches lower than I think 12, perhaps if you really stretch it down to an 8.6. Um, the other consideration is weight. They couldn't put the slate and the heavy materials on the end of flat or roof. So there, there was a lot more red in the village back then. When we had the hearing for the uh, test case and it was approved, uh, Chairman Harkey, you asked me to see if I could come up with some additional tenors red photographs, which I have accumulated some. Um, in nine twelve pitch situations where they're lighter in the village, <clears throat> and I've talked to Marcus, and also the uh, he's given me the name of somebody here, Formless Foundation, and I can't find that. So, I'm trying to get photographs. I have a pixelated ish one uh, from St. Mary up high, and there's all these box gutters that are red, not black, not some other color. And a lot of other roofs, but it's pretty pixelated. And I'm sure the library would have something that would be more useful to you than some of the things that are looking in here. So I am putting it together, but I think I'm going to request that the concept uh, consider the, the likelihood of flat locked in on the real back kitchen and structural whiteness. And uh, you know, that would be more historic than. And shingles. So I don't know how we fit if there's a rule that test cases can't have more than one location or how it all works, but I'm interested to see. I don't know that my client is interested in that. Yes, three more porches that could have been. What are some five? Yes, no, I'm not sure. I think from, from my perspective, flat lock 10, you would see that rib visually mm -hmm. at certain intervals with the TPO. Looking at the plane one spec street installation, it looks like there is none of that. It's just a yeah, it, it was every field. seven feet instead of every four feet down to 18 inches. But it is a there we're is gonna, a, if we're gonna try to harken back to a material, try to do it as, as faithful as possible and not just 
halfway through it. So I think that's the piece is if we're, if we're going to try to use this to simulate a flat lock group, I think it needs to be of detailed types to speak more to a flat lock roof as opposed to just putting a big TPO flat surface or something. That's my take. I think at the business meeting we were thinking that the expanse of flat red roof was too red. And the original tin roof would have had the ribs and shadow lines opposite that. And on the previous application, had the you know flat red roof, but it's broken up by all the skylines. It's very little red. So that could be as though we all got that. So that this one still good. gets the skies. Yeah. So we weren't. I mean, I mean, it's going to be mostly. It's the one we looked at as the previous discussion. Okay. So it's the long verticals that take up most of the space. Okay, so this one's okay. only one square, actually 1.05 square. Okay. 1.5 square okay. feet. Okay. So it's a much smaller and more typical um, flat lock roof. And I've seen occupied space. Okay. That previous image, is that this building? The, that, that is the that's an example of somewhere else. So that's it's not part of this application. Yes. But that's the one that's receiving the skyline. Mm -hmm. Yes. So this building is really good. It's a smaller shed. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which must be red. Yes, no skylights in that. Yeah. And it's actually, that was the argument, is that because it has no skylights and it has no ribs, it's just a expanse of red. Right. It seems like it would be a bit much. My opinion is we have one test case and that's enough for our purposes. Another will not benefit our purposes and replace the roofing with any kind of fruit dashboard shingle or something else. But one test case is enough, Jamie. That's where I'm at. After that, the second one's not a test case, and we're open open market for just doing it all the time at that point. So our test case done. I guess it's less of a different installation method. It's something it's different, but yeah, yeah. So we wait it out for a year and see what it is. And if it looks good, we agree to it. We go ahead. Yeah. I think we got to wait that year. <laughs> so we, we hear your concept. And, uh, right. and it is, one thing that's true is that that really is invisible on the street. Oh, I got a picture. You can't, you can't oh, yeah, let's see his backyard. The that's asshole roof will be fine. <laughs> right. <laughs> we can, we can temper, can we temporarily paint the tie back? Is it in a certain, certain tender Spanish color? <laughs> um, no, I understand and, and uh, figure out what we got to do to keep it good. I'll keep getting those pictures to you. Yeah. Fix them. See, so, yeah, I'm talking. Yeah. Jamie, don't they make a TPO roof with a ridge on it that looks like a standing metal team roof? They do. It's, I, I have had samples in my hand. It's absolutely horrifying. Is it okay? Yeah. I've never used it, but I've seen people it, it's talk just about a, it. It's just a plastic atom. Yeah. It, it's good. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. I mean, that's my opinion. It, it does give you the long length, but you know, the tenders, uh, the flat lock, the real flat lock looks so different than the kits that come that you just snap the yeah. thing on. Yeah. So those, the historic look is a subjective thing. Some of the things that we've heard. Yeah. Um, Thanks. I think I understand. We're good. Thank you. Thank you much. All right. Uh, go ahead to Item 23, DV-21-12-036-275 East Whittier. Please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and the truth. Yeah. yeah please take the name for the record. You're hiring a grand committee, how many might eat? Proposed work is Remove exterior walls, remove exterior walls, remove existing wood fence to the extent of a new structure, construct a new two store and wood frame carriage house, proposed structural fit with the current property line. The height of the carriage house will be 24.5 feet, which is below the average height of the adjacent property. The total lock coverage is 44%. The proposed carriage house setback will be 2.3 feet to align with the neighboring property and allow for a larger turning radius. The proposed carriage house facade will meet your built guideline requirements. Painted smooth left siding with five and a half inch exposure. 
Windows will be three feet, six feet, one line double hung. Doors will be three feet by six feet, eight inches, four panel wood with one foot, four inch transom. From details to match GB standards, person and drawing. Garage door will be one single door with design with a design that visually appears as two doors. Taken from the following for minutes from the October special meeting, Commissioner John Code to a building to park garage in the rear property, but think that the maxing size will overstop the property. Commissioner stated that they typically do not approve singular two car garage doors because the massing of it will approve two separate garage doors for them in the neighborhood. Commission stated that they have not seen a porch patio on top of the third floor carriage house and need to consider it as appropriate for the garage in Durham Village and how it will relate to the main home and Jane's property. Commissioners request the applicant verify the approximate height of the related property as well as the applicant to look into lock coverage since it's typically 50% or a little bit above. Applicant responded and attached a PDF that included the average of the adjacent property heights. The average height of the surrounding properties is 26.7 feet with a lot coverage of 44%. Commissioner suggested setback garage follow the 20 foot radius turning radius from the alleyway. The applicant has agreed and has updated the drawings to be set back 2.3 feet to align with the flow of the neighboring properties and allow the larger turning radius. Commissioner requests applicant to speak to zoning about the vision triangle, the intersection of Black Curry Alley and Concord Place. Believe that the proposed structure might impede on the vision triangle. The size of the carriage house will be variances. Commission suggested to request existing variances on west and east side of the property line for the proposed carriage house. At the December business meeting, commissioners inquired about the one foot 11 inches of the proposed garage that is off the property line. Commissioner has asked if a variance would be required and how that would align with the zoning. Commission should offer design feedback that can be utilized by the applicant to further refine the proposal for review at future GBC meetings. No action is required. So at the last business meeting, it was commented that the Q&A format was easy to follow. So I went ahead and provided this format. It is nothing new in this document as what is already in uh, my file. It's just formatted in Q&A so that you can see the questions from the commission and then along with uh, our PDF or revisions. So it's going to cover so the first in there is the garage door. I am still proposing to have it as one single door. However, to address your feedback and comments about having the two doors aligned with the rhythm of the neighborhood, I sought out feedback and, and assistance from a prior commission uh, member to help me understand how to replicate another garage door that shows one door as two. So there's an image below to the left that I would propose having my door, uh, my garage door replicate. The second in the document is covering the average height. So I did uh, provide in my PowerPoint deck each individual height of the adjacent properties. The average height is 26.7. In the meeting in October, it was stated that the 4S building is an exception to the rule and that I should not consider that as part of the adjacent properties. If you remove the 4S building, the average height is 25.8. My carriage house is 24.6. And this does not include five-story, 60-foot building that's happening across the street from me. The third is the uh, turning radius to allow for a 20-foot turn radius. The uh, alley currently is 17.7, so the drawings do reflect a 2.3-foot two, uh, 2 uh, setback to allow for the turning radius, as well as uh, the flow of my neighbor to my west. In regards to the alley to alley vision triangle. So after speaking with my zoning consultant, this is not something that exists and it's not something that I need to um, provide here. And then lastly is the lot coverage. So in the image, there are several different boxes. You'll see my total lot and then the existing structure, which is my home, that sits at 975 square feet. 
the new structure that's being proposed as the carriage house at 585 square feet for a total of 1,560. That is 42% block coverage. It was also stated in the October meeting that I should consider, or excuse me, that I should take into account half of the alley for lot coverage. If I do so, that's a lot coverage of 32.5. However, I should note that after speaking to the zoning consultant, that is not how you calculate lot coverage, and I should stick with the 42%, which is truly my lot, uh, my lot coverage with the new property, or new structure, excuse me. Questions, comments from the commission? So how did you calculate the average height? I'm sorry? How did you calculate the average height? It's garages on that. Yeah. So I took the height of each property and garage and then divided it by the number of buildings that I was. Did you, did you calculate the main house as well as the garage? Yes, correct. Oh, okay, that's, that's where the problem is. We only need to look at the average of the, the buildings physically on the out. So just behind me. Well, um, those next to you and across the alley from proposed building, but just the buildings that are fronting the alley, not the main houses. So just those garages. Yes. If you give me one second, I can get you that calculation. She's grabbing that the uh, the comfort place, the very first that is house on the alley. Yeah, the other part behind us. Yeah. Garage next door. It might take me a second. I'm sure. I apologize. It's in an Excel phone, an Excel file, and now I'm going to be operating with my phone. Yeah, large lot is the next structure. It's 25 feet tall, 26 feet tall. Not much on the alley besides parking spaces. So in the meeting in October, when I presented the adjacent properties, it was not stated that the houses weren't adjacent properties. So now are we not considering the homes adjacent properties? It is only the garages. Yeah, so when we said adjacent properties, what they mean is adjacent properties, the structures on the alley. So we look at alleyscapes, we're looking at typically it's garage, 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 garage. Some alleys have single family, single family, garage, garage, single family. Some have a carriage house here and there. So we're looking at the alley scape of what's across there, and that's the heights we're looking at. Sure. So you want the home behind me, yeah. the garage to my west, and that that's about all that's on an alley. The only thing that's there is, is the back of Barcelona. There's a brick right. structure there. So you want those two buildings? Well, the, the I mean, you got to be on the side of the bike. Yeah. That's the structure. It can't be some decorative. Well, I was told last time that that was not the city It's not a department. This is what they're asking for. That's what they're asking for. Okay. 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 No different from what we usually ask. No, I would agree that the structure um, across Blackberry Island should be included. It's part of the scape. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, unfortunately, so I don't have the Excel file to manipulate with me, but that's, I have all the calculations saved. It would just be a matter of so formatting it to consider. consider they all the ones that are empty, but nothing on. Average height zero? I, 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 so they're zero. So uh, that's not right. Not I know. I, you, know but you, have to, you have to take it into consideration. Don't typically have a lot of alleys that don't have a good much. I know, but there's plenty of feedback here. So that's one of the, the fact that there aren't garages on these on the neighboring properties. 
is what one of the things that's going to make this seem like such a big structure. Yeah. Alley. That's where it's going. Yeah. Every time we so add. just to be very clear, yeah. you want the 4S building, correct? Yes. To my west. Yes. You want 255 Comfort behind yes. me. And you want 281, or excuse me, my neighboring 271 East Whittier's garage. Those three buildings. And, and if you want to put in the, the back of Barcelona, whatever that height is as well, you can put that in the, into the so we're, we're trying to get a sense of the, the alley scale. Yep. I, I think it should be everything with 125 feet. So, I mean, 125 feet is our, our buffer for us on the commission. So four those blocks. four structures, yeah, yeah. the 4S building, Concord, my west, or excuse me, yes, my west neighboring uh, garage in Barcelona would be 26 feet, the average height of those four buildings. There's significant lacking of garages. I don't much want to walk down that alley before I decide which buildings I want to hike up. I just want a drawing that shows three yeah. buildings to the left and three buildings yeah. to the right and yeah. the other ones on the other side of the alley. Yeah. Typically, that, that's what we have is the, yeah. Look at the, the height of the distance. The applicant provide the alleyscape, which would be either a drawing of the properties to be left and right to the end of the street, in your case, going across the alley. Or photos, and then just you know, paste the photos to create the alley scheme, and then show the proposed property. We're, we're trying to understand. So this photo does not do that for you? The no, that's, aerial that's view? Down. We need, we're looking at elevation of that street. Okay. We're trying to figure out whether it's going to stick out like a sore thumb. Or whether the massing to the east is going to help him. Yeah, the massing to the east could be. It, it's, if you read the guidelines, it's, it leads towards a design that's no taller than the tallest, smaller than the smallest, and wants to fit into that overall scheme. The, 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 the difficulty of this specific property is it's on an alley that has a bunch of back lot emptiness. So it's, it's inherently going to stick out. So we're trying to understand. Would it stick out if this alley got built on it versus is it just sticking out because it's so flat? That's what we need to see that alley scape sure. to both sides to understand what we're looking at. Okay. I'm only seeing the building next to that has any significant mass. Everything else on the alley is one floor up here. I think the, the other piece about this design is because it's so rectilinear as opposed to the traditional garages would have some kind of sloping roof. That softened that height. This is 26 feet full height across the entire width of that lot. 24, but yes. Yeah. And you're even less than three feet from the property line. So it's 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 just it's mass. You look at mass materials and details. So to me, looking at this application, it is I get past the mass that's there in relation to what's around. With a habitable roof deck on top. Separate. Now that's stuff on there's gonna have like it's included in it's included. Yeah. 24.6 is inclusive because the roofs of 20. I'm points. talking about patio furniture, umbrellas, everything else that may be sticking up over that. I think the only very odd typically we have any kind of elevated deck space, it's not often, it's usually smaller. I think the largest high deck area we have is the old auto house. Kind of over near yeah. Lindy's, which had a second floor elevation, but it was one floor up as opposed to two floors up. It was already there. Yeah. 
there's a garage in the city park that's got a deck on top of it that it dropped down south of city park. So. In the one portion, it's got three. But to, to the comment, if you know the one about the, the garage doors. An early application, I made the comment about the doors being yeah. offset to the side. Uh, not offset to the side. That would be a new comment. It was the fact that it was one solid structure. No, I'm saying earlier I made the comment to an application. Oh, yes. It, right. it, takes, the, right. it, it takes the symmetry and sure. shelves it off. I, I think having a single door, even if you try to divide it without having any kind of width to that divider, Still, it's still reading as a single door and it not being symmetrical just exacerbates that in, in my eyes. This is reading as a very industrial type of garage. Industrial type of garage is typically around the village. Smaller one story, you got that, that rough cut block on the outside. That's the, the stylistic Materiality that we see typically, unless it's a masonry industrial garage. So we're feels like we're mixing a bit of style, material, and detail, we're kind of altering all the three things. Just not getting a good read of how this fits with all the parts and pieces. Details the details aren't similar to details we have. Massing is not similar to the to the massing we have in the village. The materials aren't similar. Materials are from what we have in here, the approved German village. Trends and materials. Okay. That was first and foremost what we made sure to cover. The, and the, the comment that we, we often say is with those three things, you can vary one of them sure. and you're usually okay. Vary two, if it's really good, you can never vary all three of them actually. Right. Right now we're varying two, completely varying two. What is the two? The massing, the details. Details matter the village. I don't believe they do. By details, not the material details, it's the rhythm details, the fenestration, the well, way that we hear you guys did say two. Once we leave with very clear distinction of what we need to do, what my significant approach is. Raise your right hand. That's where I tell the truth. Full truth, nothing truth. Once we leave with a very clear, this is what this up third time in. So this is, I'm going to accept the, the comments. We had two of the three last time, now we have one of the three. So we can leave here so the next time we come in, Something that is acceptable. So, as many comments as we need to get. So, my personal comments are I don't think that the, the roof deck is going to fly. I don't think the massing. Based on what? Based on the fact that we don't, it, it's adding extra space. We don't have roof decks of this size on garages in German villages. No precedent for this. I think the massing is too large. I did make a comment at the business meeting about the lot coverage, not lot coverage, but the proximity to the property line on the right. Is it going to require a variance? I have not heard anything about needing a variance on the Blackberry Alley side. So if, if we need a variance, the design is driving that need. It's not a variance because the lot requires it. So we discussed that with the okay. zoning consultant. And as of right now, no. I mean, he also said that this is a conceptual review and that we'll discuss variances when we get to the to that point. We're just trying to get through this conceptual review. And to my father's point, we've been here, this will now be our third time. So we want to make sure that we're super clear mm -hmm. on the expectations for the next meetings. So that that's not the best. 
conceptual review. And that, that, that's my feedback piece is okay. take into account the variances when we look at the actual application. I just didn't want you coming back with our comments about those things and that coming up in the end. For the record, there are two root files. There are two root files. But at first floor level, second floor level. What is that first floor level? So, so if this one gets approved, then there will be a one story one story and a half one and a two story one, and we'll see a two and a half story one next, right? Well, you have height limitations in the building. Yeah. Sort of. There are. There are. Since this is a carriage house, does that mean it doesn't, doesn't have a height restriction that lodges to? They get a variance of the height. Yeah, they could be approved. Um, whether it has a roof deck or not aside, just looking at it architecturally, there's something about the treatment of the parapet and how it engages those windows. Like I almost feel like the second story windows need to be dropped a little. And I would either rather see all railing or all solid parapet, but the solid parapet with the rail. I agree there. with the solid parapet. That's a little bit of architecture. I think you're looking at this area. It did need to be more distance between the top. Yes. Demonstration. It's the last last carriage house that we looked at. The outside deck space was actually on the first floor. They recessed the second floor back to yeah. minimize its yeah. height, and then they had the little patio space with the entry door. I think that's how we got by the cute, the cute looking, cute factor of that that particular carriage house. But otherwise, yeah, the typical carriage houses have slope roof to minimize the mass. I'm trying to think back to other other garages, carriage houses that were cubic in nature. I can only think of the walls. Someone's in. Yeah, Bill has that style. There's two of those, one kind of village just like that. I'm just not thinking of others of this. There's only one I can think of. And where would that be? It was uh, Mark Howard's Mode Architects did one. I'm not sure where exactly it's at village. This one? Yes, there's one on Lansing. Yeah. Is you packing on sheets somewhere? Uh, no, that was from a previous. Yeah, it, it was one that, that passed by the skin of his teeth. So we had a seven member commission and don't have one of the folks that voted for it. So we're short staffed. It won't be four votes, I think, with that, that case that we'll get today. So I have two here, and I'll have to apologize. Sure. Or, excuse me, I, the, it looks like it cut off. 179 Dashler, and then something 45 blank Lansing, but it, it seems to cut off. That's it. There are two that I took pictures of myself. Yeah, this is the one. Yeah, that's, that's the other one. Yeah. And Dashler's under construction right here. Yeah. It's both of these. It didn't go against that. It's that one. Yeah. <laughs> and vice versa. Yeah. Any other information we provide? We want to give you whatever we can. So just bear with me for a second. Sure. I just want to make sure that we go through 
all of the topics that we discussed last time. So we've covered the adjacent property heights. We've covered the garage door maxing. Mm -hmm. We're clear on the vision triangle. Uh, the setback of the garage was addressed by taking it uh, back to two feet and change, and you're clear on lot coverage. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Right, item 24, EB-21-12-037, 611 South 5th Street. I have to recuse myself from this one. Because of that. Please raise your right hand. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, not the truth. State your name. Jerome Smith. the same question. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, not the truth. I do. State your name. David Smith. Yes, sir. Morgan. Proposed work description. Proposed second floor addition to rear garage built in 1995 to create space for a third bedroom with a bath. Garage low fit roof will be removed. Walls will be retained. Gable roof to be installed with dormers designed to match existing roof the dormer between garage and house. Plus facing dormers three feet narrower as well as three dormer windows instead of four that, that originally proposed design seen in October. Addition will still be separated and delineated from main house. Small wall areas on the north and south sides to be clad and last siding as used on the main house. Roof shingles to match existing. Side wall dormers to be slate to match existing. The mean wall height is proposed to be one foot higher. Making the new north south ridge two feet higher than the ridge of the existing east west cable roof. Proposed dormer windows will be four foot to four feet tall instead of five foot tall since the main wall will be one foot higher. As stated by the applicant, verified by store preservation staff, the existing rear garage was built in 1995. Following a statement from the approved October 19, 2021, German Village Commission Special Meeting Minutes, commissioners have issue with the proposed dormer from the back of the addition facing the alley. Commissioner states that the higher ridge is acceptable as long as it doesn't include the other garages in the alley. Commissioner has also requested photos of the alley escape to get the height of the other garages. Commissioner has suggested to height the slope of the roof line on the interior side south elevation to allow more headroom. For the roof pitch to be a low pitch to allow more space and to keep the north elevation more traditional. On a side note, Commissioner Thiel requested staff to verify if there was a COA issue for the paint job. If so, there is an issue with the foundation that is now painted but was not painted prior. Staff has verified that there was a COA issue, but the foundation was not painted and should have remained unpainted. Or the foundation was painted. Should have remained unpainted. Um, I've discussed with the owner recently about that issue. Um, I'm receiving a COA again. Hopefully, we can um, come to agreement later. Uh, the commission should offer design feedback that can be utilized by the applicant to further refine the proposal for review at a future GBC meeting. No action is required. Anything else to add? That was a good summary of what we discussed here. And I think uh, we are hoping to make steps so that uh, the owner knows how to move forward. This is a challenging situation given the program that we're trying to put into the garage. We have to keep it from being too bulky. That's where the roof uh, design that we have retained. But have revised and then still builds a good approach. Questions, comments to the commission? It's an invisible street. Pardon me? How much of the of this projects be even visible from oh, the street? From the street of six, uh, very little because it's a very deep um, lot and the, the house is very tall, fairly close to the side of them, not to mention the trees that are in the ground. So, yeah, the street, hardly any. In the alley? From the alley, as and we did include the some alley scapes and as best we could from the alley, it, you know, obviously it does face the alley directly, but the roof 
This was part of our design from the start. Slopes back up and away from the L. We have reduced the size of the door as new. Oh. It was significantly larger the first uh, our first uh, conceptual review. And I would note in the in, in the uh, alley elevation to the to the north to the, the garage directly to the north, even though it has no space above, it it is a very bulky building. It, it is, presents a shear face to the L. This is a case as you was, that was just described where there's a number of houses as you go to the south that had no garages at this time. This is a kind of setting the stage a little. Jerry, correct me if I'm wrong, but what what I think we proposed option one, our option one. We got your feedback. We went and then we rendered that. And then we looked at it and we and we came up with a third option where we lowered the roof, where we trunked the dormer a little bit more. So it was like, you know, the, the process kind of took us, uh, which is perfectly fine and a little bit of a circuitous path, but we, yeah. you know, we felt like in option, what we're calling three, yeah. We lowered the ridge line, shrunk the dormer, made it more in concert with some other details that made it more a little more historically significant looking than yes. the four hipped 1980s garage. Well, that is that is true. The, the, you know, the existing garage I hadn't really commented on. It's a low squat building, maybe not the most successful uh, project in that it matched the roof of the two story large house. And brought it down to the garage scale. Uh, it it really does not hit. It's a place where maybe matching failed a little bit. But beyond that, it uh, we're looking for space that we would like to add to the home, and a way to do it that does not uh, create a garage that stands out as as not fitting in the in the building. So the second floor connector doesn't actually go into the. That, that's correct. The layout of the second floor doesn't does not uh, really allow that. So the garage, the stairs step down and enter back in through the kitchen. It takes on all, all the buttons. Okay. Got the connector roof underneath the eave of the, of the historic building. And so you've made the dormer face of the album much smaller. It's all lower than the 80s garage. This moment I have the issues with it. And do you actually have two separate garage doors? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Great. I was going to comment that oh the roof seems a little tall, but that's the existing roof, so it's staying. <laughs> so I'm yeah, like, <laughs> that's hard to do. Well, and plus elevations make roofs look taller, so be a little cautious with them. Which is actually quite cute. You can prove this the garage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now the question is, can the work be done without destroying the large tree? But that is a challenge, but our roof line helps us there as well. I think we'll have to get get a little assistance, probably limb the tree back, obviously, to create some space. And you know, it's conventional framing, so we're not craning craning anything up there. Uh, but I, that's uh, something I can't guarantee. We would sort of want to save that tree. Yeah, the the Lampus tree to the south yeah. on the south line. 
I, that may need a little bit of, of limbing up, but it's it's we and we've done that, participated in that with our neighbors, to be able to kind of preserve that. It's got some structural issues. It's working on itself. <laughs> to the to the north, the river birch, you know, the main part of that river birch will 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 stay there, but the uh, the other part where it starts to go horizontal, which needs to be addressed anyhow, will yeah. get cut off. Drove down Macon Alley here on the street view to see what was there. That's the question. Yeah. yeah I think it, it's looking good. Okay, but that is very helpful for us because it allows us to, to move forward in the way that makes the best sense for you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Run down this last of the conceptuals. And I have a new business, uh, GB 21 09 006, 628 South 6th Street. Two eight South 6th Street. Nope. I have an old business, I have 26 GB 21 10 027, 120 Reinhardt. Raise your right hand. We're going to tell the truth, the whole truth, number three. Yes. State your name. Hey. You, sir. Brian Marsic. Thank you. Sorry, you bothered about that. Um, so, as work description, applicant requests a change in the rear window design from the multi light window to one over one window, including the updated roof line of the second floor addition. Application was recently approved with the October 6, 2021 hearing with the conditions of lowering the proposed addition roof line for the existing roof line. The updated drawings indicate a notch to have been removed from the original roof located in the northeast corner. Applicants stated that they would need to remove a portion of the roof in order to lower new rear addition on roof line. Staff also noted that the applicant is proposing to install stop events, which staff have informed the applicant that stop events are not appropriate for ventilation. Um, staff recommends approval of any of all clarifications to be submitted to HPO staff for review and approval. Prior issuance of certificate of certificate with conditions that the northeast corner of original original roof remain and the soft fence will be removed from the design. This is based off of CC 3116-11, stamps for alteration number 10. Anything else to add? Any hard information about changing the, the new rear windows from multi light to? Okay. Other piece here is on page four of the application red red box on the east elevation. Talk us through what's, what's going on, what's happening. Yeah, uh, based on comments from the previous feedback, the goal was to get sort of the gutter line from the addition lower than the existing gutter line. Uh, made some, it became a, you know, a, a, a sort of a geometry, make the eave deeper to make the roof slope a little bit steeper just to try to get it down. And so, and so we're pretty much at our minimum wall height in this addition, uh, the second floor wall height. And then again, with these exercises taken to get the E or the gutter line down to at least align with the existing, uh, we end up having this sort of peculiar overlap in that corner that's highlighted with a red box. Um, that wall wasn't flush with the historic house, would it work the way the wall on the other side of the addition is in this inset from the exterior wall? It, it sure would. 
Uh, the other, the, you know, the west side is pulled in just because of setback reasons. Uh, so we're obviously trying to maximize the amount of space in the new room upstairs. And, and so we are keeping sure. the east wall alive. And I think it just looks better if it looks a little recessed. Yeah. 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 And then we'd save you the headache of trying to figure out how to wrap that real quick. Yeah, I don't think we would allow you to cut the existing ropes, but then having them somehow to wrap around it with construction, which I can't quite figure out how that would work. Yeah, I mean, I certainly, peculiar was the word I chose. Yeah, so if you can bear to have one foot less on the side, that would simplify a lot of things. And since the, your vision was almost exactly symmetrical, it was actually kind of space. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're, you're right, that, that sort of same offset offset detail at the top of the first floor wall. We were just having on both sides. I'm just, I'm just really surprised that I don't remember this application. <laughs> like, either remember it's done. Like, you were here. Oh, that explains you it. Here, that explains all. I, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that, that we as a commission again, not on back. I'm surprised that we had approved continuing out from the existing wall straight back. I don't know if it showed up. I don't know if it showed up. Well, there's our okay. well, there's our where it's kind of continued straight. There's already a one story existing bump up. So this was just basically putting this on top of the written vision. Okay, right. and then obviously adding the porch and, and extending the arbor out over the new porch. And typically we require some kind of return back, which mm -hmm. negates the yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think doing the suggestion is doing what you're saying. Yeah. Question? Yeah. 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 Question about sanity. Question to colleagues. <laughs> colleagues. <laughs> Wait a few years in. Can't wait. Yes, you'll remember that you don't remember. Was there any looking through here? The last thing we had the windows and we had roof line. Was the floor from us? Yeah, switching yeah. from the multi light to the what's it one at once, that's usually something. Okay. There's something about soffits that's mentioned. Yeah, so there are soffits that's mentioned in the drawings and plans. I know it's still out there doing this flow. Um, that is against our, our project. Soffits in? Yeah, I, I think in this set that, that was pulled off. Such a new bridge fence, right? New bridge fence. We've also seen uh, it make the a linear the strip, intake. The strip. Yeah, strip. Yeah. That could be used for that. If you have the, the cathedral ceiling, you want to get that ventilation up. Yep. Got nothing else. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you much. Great. Right. Uh, I think we had one table to oh, vote. We need to vote. We need to vote on this. Oh, this is this is actual. Yeah. yeah. So this is action. It's action. Is there a whole business? Thank you. You're welcome. There is <laughs> a motion. One was it? And three six. Three six. Three six. <laughs> three six. Yes, one good thing. Oh. Okay. I well, it was, it was conceptual, I thought. No. Um, so no. Yeah. Item GV 2110-027-120 Reinhardt Avenue. I move to approve as revised by the applicant. I'm pulling the upper floor back a foot. And invest and eliminate the software. Yeah, yeah. Is there a second? second? Second. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. Nice hand it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. I believe we had uh, there was so two, one we skipped yeah. over because somebody wasn't here. There are two tables. Four. Yeah. One is item four. TV dash two one dash one one dash oh two seven. Five six six up four streets. 
their motion will continue. Yes. Continue. Second. 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 There's no objections. Hearing no objections. Carries. Item 18, GV-21-12-031-240 East Castle. Their motion continue. Motion continue. No second. Second. If there's no objections. Um, we're done. Motion carries. Motion to. Wait, wait. Sorry. Sorry. There's also the new business number 25, 628. Yes, uh, I 25 GV 21 09 006 628 South 6th Street. Move to continue. Is there a second? Second. There's no objections. None. Motion carried. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. No objections. <laughs> <laughs>